but uh, like it, well, they, it is a surplus yes definitely and so as i said if at the end of um like as we're preparing for the audit we come up with our total municipal surplus as one big number and made up by through each department and so you can see that number once we have 18 done, but 18 isn't even finished <coughs> we have at this point. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't yeah. closed either. the year off either. So that, what you have in front of you for 2018 will still have some revenue coming in for parents, and I'm still paying out some expenses so that will be generated, or that are accountable to the 2018 budget. And then Donna actually runs the spreadsheet. So like, I just enter my portions there, but when she prints off their book, if you get a print out of year to date, um, it will show you any of the surplus in that year to date report, but it's not actually showing on these sheets because these are just our projected, like well, just to show you the differences. But there will be, she will have a significant um, surplus in yes. once you add up all of her departments. She so that surplus doesn't stay with her department? No, not necessarily. So Dawn, it would show up on here sooner or later? Uh, once we get the whole year end closed, and then it would be part of the discussion we have on transfers to and from the clerks. What, you know, I'm trying to decipher here that it's not on the information that we can see, but if the numbers don't add up on our page because you have to do the math and find out there's money. Right, uh, that's right. So I'm just finding it difficult to, to make that decision when they're asking for more money, the next budget, than the previous budget, and they already had eighty thousand dollars. I'm just using that as a number. Yeah. Surplus, and the surplus isn't on here, and they're asking for more. I, 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 I see what make, you're saying. I think to make it to make in order for as a layperson to make a, uh, a decision on the budget, the, the, the numbers the missing numbers are. So, if you would just like to see the surplus deficit numbers on the bottom of each of the pages. I'd like the numbers to add up. <laughs> well, the difference is a surplus, or a dif yeah. the difference is a deficit. It's yeah. one or the other. So you have to report it as that. So I think I think that's where Kevin's going, and I have to agree with Kevin that we, we should be showing that somewhere so that it does take, because I see where Kevin's going. If you've got $80,000 left over and you want it at $80,000 more, that's really $160,000 where it could come to a break even. So I, I think it's so I could easily put the numbers the surplus deficit figures on the bottom so you can see what the profits are <coughs> if that's what you're looking for. Well I don't want to break from tradition or Oh well or, we can uh, do whatever I, I, we want. No, I, I think that would be a good idea, Donna. I think that would be a good idea. Go ahead. Trevor. So the, the concern though is if you're making if you're making budgetary decisions based on the surplus or, or a deficit based on a, one fiscal year, you're not taking into consideration what the actual operation is. So if 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 you had an, I'm just using the example, if if the child care budget had an eighty thousand dollar surplus, and you decide, well, they had eighty thousand dollars last year, so they don't need eighty thousand dollars next year. What happens when? What happens if 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 the the costs associated to the assumptions or the estimates that we've developed aren't correct for whatever reason? Something that there is in control or not in control. So the concern is it shouldn't be bait. You shouldn't always just look at the costs and the surpluses and then determine your budget based on whether there's a surplus or not. You should base the. You should in my humble opinion, the cost should be irrelevant. The surplus or deficit should be irrelevant to operating your budget. Your operating budget is your operating budget. If there's an opera, a surplus or a deficit, no different than in public works or whatever, generally if there's a, or a surplus in public works, because winter has been great. So if we reduced our public works because of that same logic, then you're risking yourself if you have a massive winter like we had five years ago, then you're going to have huge deficits. So, you know, you, you treat the budget from an operation perspective as it reads. The, 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 the nice part about having debt surpluses is you can take those surpluses and put them into reserves for the one-offs. The one-offs where you need uh, 
uh, a roof repair or whatever the case may be, then you can utilize that money. But if you're just reducing deficits over and increasing surpluses and then and changing the budgets all over the time, you'll never have any money because what will happen is the money will get reduced and you'll have an overage. And then the next year you'll have an under, and then you'll have a surplus and it just keeps flip flopping back and forth and you won't have what that report says for, for reserves. You won't have them. But I think all Kevin's saying is that that's a vital piece of information to have there, especially if we get into a 13, 18 or 20 percent tax increase, we can we can target down. But it sh it'll show up on here. And I would recommend that we have that uh, put on here. And I understand what you're saying, um, Trevor, and I totally agree with you. We don't want to cut, 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 cut ourselves to death. Uh, just just, a, in, just before you go, Kevin, uh, Val wanted to answer your question. Okay. I, I guess I would like to add to that, that that if we have had any excess, it has previously gone into reserves so we could offset other future capital costs, such as the installation we just had, or if we did have to replace playground equipment, or if we did have fences and stuff to fix moving forward in the future. But it's only recently in the last couple of years that we've ever even been close to having access just so you know so i'm not sure that it will continue this is a very positive uh outcome last year and not a typical outcome just to be aware of that we have run very large deficits in the past of you know anywhere between 50 and 100 thousand for the one main center so this is a very you guys are coming into my programs going to think we're really good <laughs> But we can also be really poor. <laughs> so um, as far as the reserves go, uh, like it, it is, it's not always typical and we don't take into account any possible one year to the next. Like I don't plan my budget based on, oh, I had a lot of excess revenue this year. So this year I'll cut this, this and this. I do plan it based on whether I can operate it or not based on our revenues and our, our, our income coming in. Thank you, Val. Yeah, so I was just going to say, so we used to put these numbers on there. Right. Council asked us to take them off, and, but I can certainly put them back on. So. Yeah, it wasn't as good. It's not a, uh, this is not a, uh, uh, an assessment of the, of the, of the, uh, of the child care. This is just strictly just accounting. General. This is strictly accounting. I don't say it was with I was having trouble with it. Uh, and she just answered the question that nullified your answer. So I don't know what to think. Sorry. You told me that that money doesn't go on here because it goes into general general funds. And she just said that, that into it goes, reserves goes like, into her. Right, so when we bring you as part of, at the end of the 2018, when we determine what our total surplus is, you know, in which areas, then what we do is we bring council a report on transfers to and from reserves. And so in the past, when Valerie's had a large, um, like last year, when she's had a, a surplus, then she was trying to save up for a new roof down daycare. So then we would take that money and transfer it into reserve, specifically outline the daycare roof so that um, when the roof was done, then we'd have the money. Turns out we didn't need it, but that's what we do. Do you understand that? I understand it. I just don't know. So how many, how many other, do we have to, do I have to do the math on the, to figure that out on every single, you would because I can certainly on the next draft put it on there for you. It's it's not a big deal. But as I said, we used to show that as a line at the bottom on every budget, and council asked me to take it off, so I did that. So that's why you don't see it on. You haven't seen it on the budgets for a couple of years. But it's no problem to put it back on, and we can have that. Then, if that makes it clearer for you, then we can certainly do that. So just just for clarity. Whatever surplus by each department gets rolled up at the very end right. to a to a number that is whatever, and right. it goes to transfer to general reserves. Council has the deter has the factor that can take that general reserve and say of the one point two million that we're putting in there, or five hundred thousand, or whatever the number is, forty thousand of it is going to be dedicated to the daycare group. 
and specifically dictate it to be that to that. The overall surplus is still 120,000, but 50,000 has been dedicated to the roof at the daycare. So you'd have 70,000 you could use for other general stuff that you would have. That that's that's the intention of the of the. It's not of the general reserve. That's that's how it operates. Um, council has that directive that they can decide what general reserves go to, and it doesn't necessarily just because just because there's and let's just say for example just because there's an eighty thousand dollars surplus in daycare, council doesn't have to spend that eighty thousand dollars in daycare. Council has the opportunity to take that 80,000 surplus and use it somewhere else if they so choose. They have to make that motion to do that. But that's that's the intention. So, other questions? Well, I have one for you. Um, we talked about uh, opening up another center. On I believe direction was given by council to look into that. Um, and you haven't put anything aside for, you don't need to put anything aside for should that take place next year? You've got no. I, I would, I would offer that I think depending what the location was like, that it's not a large startup cost. And if we did decide to move forward with a new location, that's something I would put forward to the county of Huron for, for things such as cots or tables or chairs. If you were doing a startup of a program, and they often would fund us with that. But again, it would be a, a revenue generated program that would be they they would if we received a license in a new space we would then receive general operating grant for that program as well we would have parent revenue for that program as well and as we do all of our programs currently we share equipment as it is so toys paper supplies those kinds of things the only change would be staffing and i would bring forward a budget to initiate the program but as far as startup costs, I don't feel that we're going to, like it wouldn't require a lot unless we need to install a playground. Yeah. So then moving forward, as, as Trevor's pointed out, then should she need startup costs, we can take it out of this, this revenue knowing this um, money that we have sitting away. Yeah. Okay. And we did put aside reserves for the roof that we have accomplished with 100% funding from the county. So that's under council and Donna. I don't, I don't get to freely spend any reserves. They're not mine, <laughs> unfortunately. Just like I was grateful. I remember the first year I started and there was a huge deficit. And I'm like, I woke up in a panic one night and I called somebody and I said, do I have to pay off that deficit next year? Do I have to include that in my budget? And they're like, no, it's just, that's just how the year ended. And I was like, hallelujah, because at those times it was not nearly as well supported. So like my heart was like, how will I ever overcome that? So it can go either way, let me tell you. And we are aware when there are, this is new, I think, to have any kind of access, but that's just my opinion. It's not a, it's not been a re, an ongoing trend. And it maybe might, it, it, it shouldn't be a, a totally ongoing trend either if you're considering that we're nonprofit programs. So, but we don't, haven't had to, um, Add to the tax base a lot. Okay. Okay. So do you want to move yeah. on to that? Or, um, what do you guys have next? Early 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 early. Early. So if you look at the early learning site, that is the one uh, off-site daycare is really what it is. It is at Sacred Heart School in Wingham. The only major change to this budget from the previous year is, like I say, we did not have a, a, a rent. Where do we have that one in there? Do you have that on there, Donna? Is that the program yeah. under occupancy? Under occupancy, yeah, yeah. sorry. We increased that. Um, that is the rental for um, the room that we're using up at Sacred Heart that for several years wasn't really being built by anybody. but. I still, it shows, like, I feel like our funds are going to offset it pretty good um, with the revenue that we have up there. I didn't put health and safety grant there because I felt like it's more applicable in the daycare center as a rule. But if we needed anything up there for health and safety, we could apply for it. Um, and again, you'll see the difference in wages is based on the number of staff. So there's only really uh, three and a half staff there whereas in your daycare budget there was probably about 
12 to 15 staff. So that's why those are much different. Um, food costs, how I come up with food costs, we do take a hot lunch up there daily. I deliver it by coolers and um, so that they truly have a similar daycare for, compared to the main center. And, um, but then I, if I need to, I, I will bill my own program, the early learning site, 250 a meal, if it looks like they're having a better year than we are. <laughs> But this year, everybody had a really good year. So, like, I usually use a cost of about two fifty a meal because then I'm kind of billing them for some of the cook fees and some of the heat and hydro we pay at the main center when they didn't have it up there. But it, it, it truly looks like it will be a, a, a wash program up there next year, too. And it's been a decent enough year this year, too. So there is a surplus this year there, too, I think. Or at this point, like I say, the, the 218 budget that you see on these budgets was probably put in in late November. Is that right, Donna? Um, it would be from mid December. Yeah. So I still have some, they're still not final, final, those budgets. Is there any questions on the early learning site? Uh, just uh, again, I just want to point out there was a $63,144. Surplus. You'll see where I'm going after we get through the budget. Now we're up to 143,000 with just two pages. We're going to start more daycare. Is that what you're saying? The next page is 114 thousand dollars, and then the next page there's eight thousand dollars. I'm just going where I'm going at. It, 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 it adds up to. Just so you know, when I was on council before my time, uh, especially my mother's time, the table was hammered to shut that daycare down. Hammered. I, I want them to keep this money. Yeah. I want them to keep the money. Yeah, I, I don't want to see what I'm saying. Wrong here. I mean, I'm just saying, but, but yeah. this is, it's not just the, the lines to have the, but the switching over, Yeah, but also switching over to what Trevor said, you, if, which exactly what Trevor's talking about, watching that budget. What I'm going back to saying is there was a time when it didn't make money and it would have been closed and gone, but, all, but 20 years later, 30 years later, we're showing this profit so we get to, to prosper. So what, what Trevor was trying to point out is you have good years and bad years. And you don't want, you want, you know, we, we want to keep it all going. Val's going to follow up on that. Well, I, 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 I think what we have to keep in mind is we have had some generous funding over the last four years that isn't, hasn't been historically there. So when I say we have gen, general operating grant, and, and I know this is your first budget with our program, so um, it looks very easy to make money in childcare, and really that is the opposite of true because um, we haven't had big general operating grants coming towards us before. It was the, the, the past government for the four years that has significantly increased that because universal daycare and childcare was a big push for them and something that they very much supported. I would caution you to think about who is in power now and what may happen in the next four years so i i think you think it looks lucrative right now but it is not a historically lucrative program to be in just to keep that in mind when we move forward other questions um, we're going to go with uh trevor first because he did have his hand a couple, a couple, uh, couple things um so this program has been increased to 16 kids which versus eight so that would increase your actual staff complement correct correct um, the vacation, or work, so I'm just trying to make sure. So, the, so you for every child that you that you schedule, mm -hmm. you assume the two week shutdown for Christmas, like everybody else. I but use you, billable days. I use billable days for them. Right, but then also you you assume that all those children take three weeks of vacation. Is that correct as well? That's correct. So that's well. the conservative approach where that's not right. I take kid, on every day that I think I cannot bill them. Okay. So but if they don't take a three week vacation, then it's we get three week week positive weeks. for us. Or if I have it, you know, yeah. And if you're full, you're, you're good. And if you're under, then it kind of, you know, it goes up and down too. So, so I guess my question is, does the, does the wages if match? Don't close your two, yes. Okay, good. Thank and you. when I calculate wages, just so you know, I, I, I bill out the days that they are real, like that we would be open. I bill for staff for, because I have to replace staff in all my programs when they're on vacation, 
if they have paid vacation, I calculate what it costs to cover their vacation. I also, like Sean, count on them taking sick, if they, this, this only applies to six staff. Um, if they have six sick days, I count that in what I think their wages are for the year. Um, so sick day, vacation days, I calculate that for every single room and every single person in my department, so then that shows up as their total wages. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, just, uh, just a point, uh, just the, the budget for two, 2019 that, uh, that you're asking for is, is up by 47%. I have a hard time going to my constituents and say we have to raise your taxes for the daycare for 41 for 47 percent when there's almost two hundred thousand dollars in surplus. I, I just I can't some because some of the stuff's going up uh, three hundred thousand. Where's the last one? Here? I think getting bell I think that's because you've got these extra grants oh no I see what you're saying Kevin it's just such a it's just, just a cost increase the cost increase you're talking about mm -hmm. Val, did you want to speak to that can you give me an example Kevin, well your your, your uh, actual operating cost for uh, 2018 was 882,000 and your uh, ex your budgeting a million twenty eight thousand for next year, that's a two hundred thousand dollars. I'm on page thirty-one. Okay. This is the bottom. So total operating. The is that the daycare budget? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So there were some factors that did increase the operating costs um, for salaries, and a, um, to highlight that for you would be a couple of changes to legislation, and that's the laws that we have to follow when we're doing child care. So indeed, you'll see the salaries was probably the biggest change. And Donna and I argue about this a little bit because, like I say, I calculate out to the to the how many days everyone's working. But then Donna will say, well, "That's way over. You don't need that much, or you didn't use it." But really, if you calculate it, you might need it. So I try to then cut it back a little bit. But what changed legislatively, which increased the number of hours that we have to pay for in a day for our services, is in our infant room previously. You have three staff in there. When the infants all went to sleep, I would pay one staff to cover lunch breaks, and other, everybody would kind of take their lunch breaks. The new legislation is you must have three staff in your infant room for the entire sleep time, whether they're all sleeping or not. So you increased the number of hours you're paying out in your infant room by about five hours a day just to cover the sleep room legislation. So that's one thing that added additional staff hours that I have to cover. And the other thing that changed legislatively in just the past year is, and it, and it sounds confusing, but we use it a lot, is called two-thirds ratio. And two-thirds ratio, we used to be able to have for two hours in the morning before, like from the time you open, two hours later, you can have more kids than you typically would through nine to three. And they changed that on us too. So they decreased. I have to have strict ratios met by 8.30 instead of waiting till nine or 9.30 now. And same at the end of the day, it used to be two hours before closure and now it's gone down to one hour for closure. So we've had to extend our shifts to start covering these longer periods where we have to maintain strict ratios. So I think there's about six hours or more hours a day that we've increased our services that we have to pay staff to be in the It's not covered by they've mandated more hours. Oh, that's government. something here in county who sets that, that the legislation comes from the government of Ontario and that's your Ministry of Education, Child Care and Early Learning Act. And they don't provide us funding directly. It goes through the county, but there was no funds to over offset that cost at all. Is that passed on to the users? Well, currently, though, you're still looking at not costing. Like, if you look at the projected revenues, 932.356, and your um, expenditures, 904. Um, so we're still not looking at costing anything. Like, does that make sense? Yes, it does. 
Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just, 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 you good with that, Kevin? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Trevor. Trevor. Yeah. So I, I just want to make sure that we're so it nowhere in this budget when you go through each department does taxation come into play here at all until the very end when you take all the surpluses and deficits and add them all together and whatever that net deficit is it'll always be a net deficit that's the number that gets raised by taxation so just because your expenses go up 25 percent or 30 percent does not does not constitute increases in taxation and it only increases the, the discussion about spending so you know that's the conversation it, it there's there's a correlation between spending and taxation but but it's also revenue too so you have to take into consideration the whole thing not just not just spending but trevor from an accountant's point of view i agree with you um from an operator's or an owner's point of view where you have to be concerned is you're having a good year this year, so you add this extra on, but as, as Val said, and this is for all departments, but next year you might not have a good year. So then all of a sudden, by allowing four more staff this year because you've got the money, next year the money's not coming in, but you still have four more to staff to pay for. So from an accountant's point of view, I understand what you're saying. From a business owner or a manager's point of view, it's the whole circle that comes around with it. So when I hear questions like this, I, I understand what you're saying at the end of the day, but I also understand that if you're not careful over three budgets, you could add a million or two by not noticing the employee that was hired on for a short term position to do something is still there three years later. Kind of like the conversation we had last night about the three part timers. It's the same thing. So from for just so that we're not getting anyway after that any more questions Valerie, you can okay so that was early learning in Val so yeah. you want to go to before and after maintenance yeah. so maintenance before and after sorry my, I got my state a little bit It is a high revenue generator because of the numbers, and that has typically, you'll see that the total revenue 15566 is projected. We had a revenue of 175 so far, or it looked like in 2018. But again, it was a really high year of attendance. Like we had over 55 kids at after school. That is not. Like if the numbers continue to grow, then I would be confident to say you could reduce what we budget in some of the daycare areas, but I really don't know how to project those numbers. Like it does fluctuate, but it has been growing. Like it's a very successful, well used program, but I just don't know how to predict that. So in the past, this budget, that you're looking at currently would always make money because of the lower staffing costs because you're one to 15 and one to 13 versus one to three and and no rev and no cost associated with your facilities where and so we typically would take any surplus from this budget to offset the costs of the daycare budget so that they all remain kind of revenue neutral it's only within the last two years that we we had surpluses. They usually all balanced out in general to like be a complete revenue neutral. But definitely Maitland River is your biggest uh, revenue bringer in. Any questions on that one? Just, just to be noted again that in 2017 uh, there was uh, $80,000 uh, extra. The budget went up. This year, there's $114,000 extra, and the budget's going up. I'm just when you mean the budget's going up, I guess um, both sides though go up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, revenue yeah, both and the revenue expenditures. So, so, sorry, I was going to say. Yeah, well, so, I'm taking the revenue, the actual versus right, the budget. I'm yeah, the budget. But the um, but both as long as both sides are going up, um, do you see what I'm saying? So she knows then that she's going to have a lot more kids. 
So that's going to bring her a lot more revenue, but then that's going to cost her more money. So as long as the the increase in revenue and the increase in, in the expenses are relative to last year, meaning, okay, last year we had 30 kids, this year we know we're having 60, so you would expect the revenue to double and the expenses to double. Yes. Yeah. I, I just, uh, I, I guess I expect each department to rise and fall on their own merit, where in reality, her department has a quarter of a million dollars that they should have in their department that they could do whatever the heck they like. Yeah. If they want to expand, no, but I mean, if they want to expand, if they had to fix a roof, it it's came from their budget. Just because their budget's underscored doesn't mean, I don't think it should be, you know, that's where I'm just, I can't. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Um, three, um, we should be very pleased with this. Because it's money that goes into um, into reserves that can be used to offset deficits. Like you, you, you're happy about seeing some profits with some of these budgets. More of them have deficits, and those are the ones we have to worry about. So if we have some extra money through Val's department, great, because we're going to use it elsewhere. Plain and simple. Can Money is made, stays in a, goes in a pot, and we can use it later, either with the daycare or elsewhere. Because we're going to need it. To support something else something that's, else. Not, that's yeah. not working. That's right. Something yeah. else. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 agree with, I agree with Kevin's assessment that we're, we're, we're potentially taking money from profitable programs and offsetting the ones that aren't but but what 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 this council will learn as the council before it learned and the council before it learned is that when you go to talk to the constituents about what service they don't want they want them all so that's the conversation that that's why they that's why that money has been used for those services is because when you talk to your constituents they want the service it's cost them a bloody fortune in taxation, but they want it. And that's the that's the question that has to be done. We we have to make difficult decisions on on what services we offer, but ultimately right now we have there hasn't been many conversations about what services we're not gonna offer because the conversation is, well, I want it. I don't care what it costs, I want it. And, and that's and that that's not fair, but that's the reality that we've been living in the last four, eight. 25, 35 years, I would say. Yeah. Just in, uh, if someone went on the internet, on the, uh, the website and downloaded the, the budget, which is there, they would not be able to sell unless they went line by line, like we're going, who's doing well and who's not doing well. I think, like, I, I, I'd much rather see a system where we know who's shining and who's not. Yeah. And, you know, so they, they get the praise that they need. But, but I guess the other thing, too, to keep in mind is, as Chris pointed out, lots of departments don't have any revenue. Mm -hmm. Right. So so those departments have no opportunity to break even or try to break even because there's there's no revenue generating um, from that. So you have your, your program ones that do have your generations. But um, so say, for example, like public works doesn't make as much money. <laughs> so... But the daycare is basically a not-for-profit <laughs> organization. Right. And, and and you're very right. For 2018, you're going to see some un surpluses in the daycare that we have not seen before. So what we've done before is, and myself and Dwayne, we don't look at the daycare sort of individually. We take all of Val's programs, add them all together, all the expenses, all the revenues, and look at it as a whole. And we'll do that as part of our year end so that we can talk about um, these surpluses, that, the very wonderful surpluses that her department has, has uh, generated for this year and what's the best um, action for those, for sure. Just, but I know what you're saying. There, just for when sure. her, her, uh, uh, their department came back in, in a, year or two, a year or two from now and, and asked for uh, a project. Um, I'm not going to be looking at those other ones either. Just, just her request right. as well. So, 
So if there was fair. money into reserves, which we, we've talked about, so if we were, if we, um, one of our suggestions would be, as I was saying, we, uh, to put the money into reserves, so then if she needed a project, the money would be there for her. That type of thing. But definitely, I, I know what you're meaning so about. We'll be there for. Well. So folks, yes, yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna kind of bring this yeah. to All you. Right. Bring back. Not to be mean, but uh, oh, Madam Chair no, wants to you. keep going. She's hot here tonight. No, I, <laughs> I guess because budgets are <clears throat> budgets are not why I went into my business either. But Donna, if you could, I think that tax levy and how it's established have, have they had that discussion? Because, yes. Okay, because I feel like if you look at my four budgets. I help decrease the tax levy that you're going to have to apply to your your people or our people. And so in general, even though the budgets go up, it does go up because my expenses go up, but then hopefully our revenues continue to go up and offset those costs. So the bottom line is hopefully these budgets that I'm presenting to you will help decrease the tax levy that will then cause your taxes to be calculated. So these are my budgets, while they seem uniquely, uniquely revenue, like ha, like creating revenue, it, it, it will be able to offset your costs next year. I'm projecting to help you offset your taxation costs with my budgets next year, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Okay. Perfect. So next you have um, before and after Sacred Heart, Valerie. Yes, that is a small program. It is taking longer to grow. Uh, and I think the reason that is just for your information purposes is because it's a mainly bust program and it's a rural program. So fewer of the families are uh, meeting it. They're, they're coming in from a wide geographical area. So fewer of them tend to use the before and after school, but it, it, it still seems to run as a revenue neutral. And, and also as a historic reason why we have broken the budgets out into these different sites is so that you can keep a good track as counselors on which ones are viable and which ones aren't viable. It would be really easy to put them all into one budget, but I think for your, for your information, it's really good to know which sites are really good and which sites we have to watch and which sites maybe are at risk. And, and so like, for example, if we did decide to start up a new site, we want to know if it's been a good decision or a poor decision or if it's a viable decision, and that will be done by a separate budget as well. But in general, childcare is all one pocket, right? It's all coming under one funding stream from the county. They break it down themselves by licenses as well. So for Sacred Heart, it's just a smaller program and it's a smaller budget. Any questions on that one? And then early on, early yeah. on. So early on is your only most unique budget. It is as far as childcare goes because this is our contract budget with the county of Prima to provide the parent and caregiver programs for the north end of the county. So these are your play groups that the parents attend. These are the parenting workshops that our parents. Uh, go to so these dollars are 100 percent funded so we get that lump sum of 115,000 or yeah into our programs um i'm trying to look at what that wage enhance oh some those staff are paid some wage enhancement as well and that's a 100 percent recoup there too um this budget had a significant um capacity building twenty thousand dollars given to us um, in 2018 and there was some stipulations on how those dollars were spent so it was to help us increase and promote and raise awareness of the early on programs and to make them more um, friendly for the parents increasing the number of hours parents could access a on-site person at one of the locations increasing the number of programs if possible that we could do for parent training and so uh, I had mentioned earlier that we would possibly have some, you'll see um, in your regular budget meeting, some uh, equipment and things going through. So we purchased some iPads for our offsite so they can do photographs and documentation, some laptops and computer work so they can do all the statistical stuff when they're out and about too uh, that we report to the county. But basically this is 
you'll see that the 11,000 administration fee, that's what's paid into the daycare for us for being willing to work with the county and provide my payoff part of my time and efforts for running that program as well. And, and what I really love about this program is they've been kind and generous. Any equipment and toys and supplies we buy, they, they allow us to use them in our, our other sites as well. So it, it's been a, a really good complement to your child care programs for your years when you're struggling because then you can really cut back on your equipment purchases in your main daycare and your off-site daycares and borrow and use some of the early years stuff. Questions? I'm not seeing any bell. Okay. Okay, Bauer, I think that's it for you then. Okay. okay, thank you. And so then we, Sean, how are you doing? Okay, sir. So if we could uh, go back to the um, public work. So yesterday, Sean, we finished your complete public works budget. And that uh, ended up on page um, 23. That was the bottom of your um, public works. So um, could we move right into street lighting on page 24 then, Sean? Yes, absolutely. I think we've got 10 budgets to go through on this and then we'll be for the public works piece. So street lighting uh, is an interesting one. As uh, Council is probably all aware, we uh, entered into that uh, whole LED lighting uh, retrograde or retrofit uh, that was wrapped up halfway through 2018. The intention, uh, the plan behind that program was that there would be significant savings in, in energy costs, which we would use to pay back the program. Uh, now, happy to say that the energy costs are very good. The pro there was a problem with the project, though, in that uh, street light energy consumption is all uh, calculated and tabled. Basically, they've come up with a formula that tells you how many hours uh, the lights are on, so they can they can estimate very accurately the, the kilowatt uh, hour consumption, the kilowatt consumption of the lighting fixtures. The problem is that that whole thing is based on an audit. When they brought uh, Real Term Energy in and did this whole uh, retrofit, they did a very careful and accurate audit of our system and found out that we had 86 fixtures approximately that weren't accounted for. So we dropped our energy consumption, but we actually then they, they put the new street light total into the formula. So what happened is that we are not going to see the return on investment uh, as favorable as we had, we had hoped. That being said, all is not lost. We are still seeing uh, some benefit. The numbers should get better next year because remember, this, this whole process wasn't completed. The entire ins installation wasn't done until late March, early April. So I'm expecting that for 2019, when we're looking at the budget moving into 2020, the, the actuals will be much better. Or I shouldn't say much better, but somewhat better. Uh, that being said, so then really the important number to look at is your transfer to reserve loan payment under Wingham Street Lights and Wyatt, Wyatt Street Lights. And you'll see that based on our best uh, estimates, we've lowered that contribution. I will say this much, uh, you'll see that there was a bit of a drop in um, and subcontracted uh, expenses because the one thing we found uh, not just here but in other communities is these lights are very reliable so with the old uh, high pressure sodium uh, lights there was a lot of upkeep and repair required through the course of the year these things typically they either run or they fail catastrophically and if they fail they're uh, they're covered by warranty so the adjusted contribution to reserve takes into account the, the the more reliable fixture, but the decrease in, uh, uh, in overall savings because of the uh, enhancement of fixtures, or the increased number of fixtures. Um, really no other significant changes anywhere else, uh, so unless there's some questions on that one, I'll move to something that's a little more exciting. Trevor? So Sean, it, it, that was a discussion about re when you did the real-time audit that 
those 80 fixtures were we weren't being charged by West Ario for the actual usage of those fixtures, correct? Correct. So the only time that would have come up is if you were doing a, a replacement of a fixture and potentially you'd have to do this audit at some point. At some point, this was going to catch up to us at some point, correct? Well, I would think so. Either West Ario would have done it or at some point we, for whatever reason, would have done a streetlight uh, count. But to the best of my uh, estimation, we were running on, a, on an audit that was probably greater than 20 years old. It was, it was a very old audit. Thank you. Other questions? I'm seeing you. So do you want to go on to airport next then, Sean? Yes, I, I believe, uh, Donald, that I'll, I'll skip user pay and do that at the very end. Okay, perfect. It's kind of a different, different approach. Uh, so yes, moving on to airport. Um, now I have, since this was printed, I've reduced the overall uh, uh, cost based on some more accurate data that we've been able to pull in by approximately $5,570. So. Your bottom line budgeted uh, 2019 budget should actually be 10639, or sorry, 105829. And when we come to the next pass on this, we'll, we'll update that. Okay. Where those changes came from were, uh, and I can talk about it when we get into the parks, there was an overestimation uh, that I picked up on, on the number of students that I was planning to use. I was incorrect on that, so I changed those numbers and reduced the student complement by one. Uh, also, under um, inspections and contracts, you'll see there was $11,092 there. Uh, the big piece of that, $6,400, was for uh, NAVCAN approach costs. Uh, basically, NAVCAN uh, last year decided that they weren't going to, to cover the cost of, uh, of approach documentation for airports. And there's a big audit that's required, but it's not going to be required for us uh, from what we can tell until 2020. So this year, the the approach uh, confirmation cost is a thousand as opposed to sixty or seventy four hundred. So I've adjusted the the five thousand dollars off of that. Um, outside of that, there's um, the one cost that uh, I've left basically unchanged, and I'll, I'll bring this to everybody's attention. Building repair and maintenance, I still have $7,500 in there. Um, you'll notice 2018, we didn't spend that much, but in 2017, the actuals were closer to the 7,500. So uh, erring on the side of caution, uh, as we enter into a new uh, year, I was proposing that we leave that number higher, and if need be, we can reduce it next year. Um, outside of that, nothing of any major significance to look at. Sean, can I just ask you a couple questions on that? Yes. Uh, one would be the runway. Um, what are we looking at replacing that? What, what shape is that runway in? And would that be ordinary pavement or we're into, oh my goodness sakes? Currently, the runway is in fairly good condition, but it is aging. Uh, these runways uh, have to meet certain uh, load standards uh, based on the use. So, my understanding is that any work on the runway itself, like any paving job that's done there, is uh, much more extensive than what you would expect on Edward Street behind us. So there will be some costs. Uh, as we get further into operations this year, uh, my, my hope was that I could bring the report to Council to, to really get into some of the details on the long-term uh, needs for the, the airport. But at this moment, the, the, the runway and the apron are in reasonable condition. The other question I have, and it's relating back to when I was on council before we discovered that there was not a person in North Huron that uh, had a plane out there. Um, is, is there anyone in North Huron using that? And you don't have to answer that tonight if you have to look into it. I'm, you know, I'm just talking tax base, taxpayer, our taxpayers from North Huron using that, those uh, facilities out there. As far as stationing their planes, I know the helicopter companies from um, Rocks that are I believe. Um, so could you look into that? And get back. I would to have to. I would have to look into that. If you don't mind. And that's really not a, a budget concern. So if it comes back at a later date, I'm fine with that. Okay. Anything further on airport? Well, Jeff. The only question I had is when was the last time 
can you recall when the last time that that the the woodlot was the woodlot was actually farmed? When I was on council, so seven eight years ago. I'm I'm through. Right. I'm told that it is getting close to being ready now. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll move on then to the next one. So we it's, want. Sorry. Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sean, could you just tell me how many acres that involves uh, the property that um, that we own with the airport? Just curious. If if I can, I'll come back with. Oh, okay. Answer, just yep. to, so that I can be accurate. Yeah. Okay. Thanks nice to me, but I'd like to be very accurate with that because there's certain percentage of the lot. So. Yeah, and, and Paul, you're talking about the entire thing, not just the yeah, airport. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I mean the whole. Yeah. Acreage. Here. And I'd, I'd rather come back with those yeah. numbers. Yeah. And since you're going to do that report, could you do the acreage of woodlot? If yes. it's if it's not a big deal, so it, and then land. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so you wanted to skip past water and sewer to storm. Yes, please. And storm is on twenty eight. <clears throat> okay, storm sewer. You see that I reduced it fairly aggressively. And the reason I did that is, uh, you know, we were looking at the, our actual involvement. It's it's very limited. Every year, um, there's a contract that's put out by the county. We piggyback on that to have uh, storm uh, storm catch basins cleaned. So they come in back early. You know, that way, you know, we don't have any backup problems. But it's a reputable firm. It's vetted through the county, so there's no sense really tying up our own personnel so as you can see I really reduced the number to uh, to more reflect what I think uh, yeah. that given the fact we're using that contract of service it's it's really not a, a heavy use or a, a heavy budget item so that's why you'll see that fairly significant drop and, and the hope this year the, the the intent would be that I would bring in the uh, report for the council outlining the details of the tender when the county puts it out and, and requesting authorization so just just a quick question. So going back to Dean, when I was on council, I think we spent fifty thousand dollars buying one of those trucks to use in house. Do we still own that truck? We still own that truck, and it's used fairly extensively for water and sanitary, as well as um, uh, installation of, of poles and that sort of thing. By virtue of its design, it's not as easily used for for that simple task. Mm -hmm. It's made more for um, but well, basically the truck we bought is made for high pressure rotting of horizontal lines, whereas these guys are just coming in, they're vacuuming out individual lines and they'll they'll just run up the road and cover all of it. So what you're saying is that truck is worth keeping and we shouldn't be putting that on the market? Like are the, we getting enough use out of it to keep it? The truck has really bailed us out on countless occasions. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so we'll move on then next, Sean, to your waste department on okay. page 29. This this is a little bit of a, a heavy reading here. Now, before we get started, the, the good news piece on this, um, we, we're starting to get a little bit more uh, information in as we get, uh, get closer to what we would call year end. So we looked at the revenue lines and... Um, there's two revenue lines that I think can be significantly increased. Um, we do get a grant from Waste Diversion Ontario. It's based on the amount of recycling, uh, you know, our tonnages and all that kind of thing. Um, and this year, I see no reason why we wouldn't increase that to 50000 based on last year's actuals and the uh, heavy traffic that we're seeing in, in the, the use of our recycling. So. I'm going to suggest that we increase that revenue to 50000 I think that's realistic and, and reasonable. Um, and then the other one, uh, when you look at our, our tipping fees uh, under revenue, it shows 219497 Well, our actuals now are sitting at two twenty nine. dollars uh, So I think that conservatively, um, Don and I were discussing this, and we could go at least $180,000. I think that would be well within the realm. We may even, as we really close up the year, consider bumping that number up a little bit more. The risk, of course, with revenue is if you get a little over ambitious and, and uh, overshoot, it has a it has a very heavy negative impact. So, 
it's, it's, it's want, definitely want to go the other way. <laughs> yeah, so expect to see an increase. We just have to be very careful. We'll have some discussion on on what a reasonable increase would be. But I, I would say no less than 30,000 more uh, on the revenue piece. So when we go into the, uh, the curbside collection portion, that 191,000 reflects two things. It reflects the, the changes that we made to recycling for this year, which had that net, net benefit of approximately 18,000. But it also made, I made sure that we captured the uh, the overhead bins that you see at the landfill site. We've got that row of, uh, of bins for recycling and all that uh, set up. So that's uh, that's captured as well. Right so that's, that's every aspect surrounding um, collection, whether it be curbside or uh, overhead bin. When we get into uh, landfill administration, uh, I think that that's very straightforward. Now the one that should jump off the page at everyone is the uh, transfer reserve. Uh, right now, what we indicated is, uh, is a $100,000 transfer to reserve. You know, what we had earmarked that for, and this might become a, a point of discussion later, part of operating a landfill is not operating landfill. Uh, that $100,000 we, we earmarked as what's referred to as post-closure cost uh, uh, expenses that would go to reserve. The expectation is that any, any entity that operates a landfill has the funds in reserve to close it. And when I say that, there's two, two portions to that. The ECA or the certificate of approval for the site, very clear, as well as regulation, very clearly outline the steps you have to take. There's gotta be, somebody's gonna fact check me on this. Um, but there's a, there's a certain quantity of cover that's required, uh, followed by a, uh, another <coughs> coating of soil material for uh, the purpose of growing and, and vegetation. So, that's all factored in. Uh, they base it on the size of the footprint. There's a fairly extensive formula. Formula. They look at the age of the fill or the landfill, the expected closure date, run it through a bunch of numbers, and come up with uh, this post closure. The other piece that you have to budget for or have in that account is the is the money to monitor this thing for 20 to 30 years after closure, and that's based on instruction from the from the regulator. Once you close it, so that money's earmarked there for that. We're trying to, we uh, through through our engineers, we got uh, some pretty good detail on what we should have in reserve for that. So you know, when we get into kind of the painful discussions, just bear in mind that, that number does have a little bit of horsepower behind it in terms of regulatory requirement. Three. What's the life time expectancy? I believe we've got. Roughly 75 years left 75 on, that, on uh, the wing one, and what we're looking at, we uh, we have a certain amount of flexibility with EW. There's a lot of life left in it, but because it's not used, at some point we have to commit to closing it. So, for the purpose of calculating these numbers, we've uh, uh, we've said we would target a closure date 2030. The reason we did that is uh, if we said we were going to close it next year, 2020. Uh, there would be some very heavy cost implications. That's part of the formula. So, and that by by saying that we're targeting a closure for EW ten years out, that gives us a little bit of time to to maybe look at other potential uses. You know, we don't know five years from now there may be merit in opening it up. So, gives us a little bit of flexibility to to look at that asset before we close it. Was there, was there a fair amount of capacity left in the EW? Like I think if I recall, we closed it simply because we wanted to operate out of one. Um, is there some capacity there? I, I know the Wingham, I remember when we went to the clear bags, we added like 40 years to life expected. Just it was an amazing number that mm -hmm. um, Mr. Campbell brought forward. Um, but it, the, the East Wallenosh one, is, is there a potential there for more usage? I forget. Much more, yes. I, I don't have the number offhand. I can get it for council. Yeah. It's neither one of those landfills that are even close to their uh, uh, actual capacity. Okay. They're, in, they're in good shape. It's, it's refreshing to have that. Um, now, as we go down, there's uh, actually I've got some detail here. I can I can give you. Okay, so one of the uh, 
one of the ones that sometimes is, is found to be interesting is the operating cost piece. And that's down in the wing of landfill. It's a fairly big number, 23,000. And basically what that covers, that's, that's broken down into a whole bunch of different items. We've got uh, aggregate cover, cover material. We've got interact system fees, um, keystone support costs, heavy equipment rentals. Uh, we do an annual inspection of the scale to make sure that it's, uh, it's reading accurately. Um, there's a small amount for miscellaneous hardware, and then we also have some network uh, costs because it's important to note that the landfill is tied to the network. We use that because everything in the scale runs through Keystone, so it's, it's an extremely accurate system. Plus, we have 24-hour security there, so everything's all streaming cameras and that sort of thing. So it's, believe it or not, necessary for landfills. <laughs> I'm not going to ask that question. Yes, I will. Yeah. So why? No. <laughs> Um, so then the other interesting numbers here, uh, there's, you'll see that there's annual costs under uh, Wingham Landfill, annual costs under EW, and then there's also operating costs under Blythe Hullet. Those are tied to engineering. So the annual, annual cost and the offsite investigation studies in Wingham are the fees that we receive when Burnside's very good to give us quotes at the beginning of every year to cover regulatory reporting, sampling, every component that's required to comply with, uh, with the ministry for the operation. So we, we got quotes from Burnside for all three sites, and that's uh, that's what you see in front of you there. Was there anything else that kind of jumped off the page on landfills? Um, I just was curious if you had the numbers or you could point the numbers where uh, changing the, the pickup uh, to um, recycling every other week, did that make it a difference to the to your operating budget? It made a, now that number is embedded in that, uh, you look up at curbside collection, uh, 80,000, 89.95. Of course, this year we had a slight increase, the annual increases, but you can see it went down from the Budget at ninety three five. It it worked out in total in the first year. It was about eighteen thousand dollars savings uh, by by making that reduction. And then of course they've I've had to factor in there's an annual step increase and and unfortunately it was done partway through the year, so it's not it's not a straight cut. Hi, Trevor, but which but what you also said, Sean was. Because of that, you increase the number of bins at the landfills, like, right? No, we haven't increased them. We just I made sure that they were captured up in the in the first number, the hundred and ten thousand. Now we have been looking at the possibility of, of increasing bin by one. We're kind of playing it by ear, but right now we found that uh, we're just barely meeting the demand. There's there's a lot coming. So, so, the, so, so, sorry. So, the eighteen thousand dollars operating savings is being is the reason why we're not seeing that as the eighteen thousand dollars reduction is because of the increase in the step cost of the contract. Step cost of the contract, and I, uh, I've reflected all of the bin costs right up here in that line for this year. I they were accounted for elsewhere. They were accounted for elsewhere somewhere else. Okay. Yeah. So no, this the, those two numbers I had actually calculated them, and uh, you were looking at one hundred eighty-five thousand total for um, for the recycling, and the, or for all the curbside functions, recycling and um, and uh, regular garbage, and then there's roughly five thousand dollars in uh, in overhead bin fees. Does does that help? Thank you. Any other questions? I'm not seeing any. Donna? Okay, so we can move on then, Sean, to cemetery. 30. Okay, now, cemetery, um, before we even get started again, I had mentioned making some minor adjustments that you'll see in the next uh, printout that Donna does. Properly adjusting the salaries, the part time salaries brings this down to uh, 120000 942. Uh, so again, that'll, that'll be at the very least that, that adjustment will be in the next round. There's, I don't know if, if anybody needed any specifics on the revenue lines. I think they're pretty straightforward uh, as far as the, the various uh, 
revenue streams that we see at the cemeteries. Uh, as far as uh, details, I've got uh, miscellaneous hardware, uh, or sorry, for materials and supplies. That uh, that covers, uh, that's $8,300. That covers a couple of things. There's uh, obviously, I do have uh, $3,900 calculated in there for, uh, for just miscellaneous, miscellaneous operating hardware and materials. I've also got a Mini X uh, tied in there. Now we rent one and use it both in William and Blythe, typically first thing in the year. And the reason we do that is that, uh, of course, we have the vault is fairly full. The Mini X, uh, because it's early in the season and things are wet, it allows a better reach. And they can. Uh, we like to get things moving as quickly as possible so that you know, there's typically a rush in the spring where families are wanting to move their turns. The Mini Excavator, although it's an additional cost, it does less damage and it allows the operators to do the job much quicker, much more accurately. So we've uh, we've been in the habit of renting that for the last couple of years and, and it's been, if it weren't for the cost uh, and our, our current budget situation, we would actually be looking to purchase for purchase one of that. For the time being, the, the rental seems to work for us. Um, and then, of course, there's some small fuel costs. When I go, uh, when we go down into miscellaneous expenses, which is one that always catches people's eyes, so I like to kind of give some detail on that. Um, there's, we pay fees to the Bereavement Association of Ontario. Um, we do budget for the resale of interments. Uh, in, in terms, uh, of course, our bylaw allows people to come in and sell us back the plot, and it does happen. So we budget for some. Uh, some expense there. Uh, of course, we, we have the new computerized uh, system that's in the process of being integrated. It has its annual fee, which I've split up between uh, Wingham and Blythe. So that's uh, 3000 for uh, Wingham, 2600 for Blythe. Uh, now, there is a new expense in here, and I, uh, this one I really wanted to, to bring to uh, Council's attention. It's It's both in Wingham and Blythe, and uh, having talked to, having, having visited the, the site and spent quite a bit of time talking to the cemetery attendant, we would like to spend some resources or apply some resources to the proper leveling of markers. If you go to the cemeteries, you'll see that there's there's some of them that are, that are leaning, uh, aside from the disheveled appearance and, and you know the obvious concerns there's some health and safety concerns. When you start getting into some of these bigger, taller ones, when they start getting a bit of a list to them, uh, they do become dangerous. In fact, he's got a couple that he's actually laid down for the time being. So all things being equal, we had budgeted uh, 4,500 for Wing and 2,500 for Blythe to go in and, and really start leveling and squaring up these things. It doesn't get you, it sounds like a lot of money, He's figuring we might get 20 in Wingham for that price because the concrete below them is massive. Okay, so it, basically the concrete goes is, is three to four feet, so that it gets a little cross line to prevent any more heat. So there's there's quite a bit of cost, and most of that is contracted services, very new that we, we can do ourselves. So that's new and it's in there. It's something you know we can we can discuss as we move on. Um, I do have some miscellaneous building repairs factored in. Uh, and we've got memberships uh, tied into this thing, and um, really, those were the those were the highlights as far as uh, sanitary operation goes. Questions for Sean? I'm not seeing any. Dog. Okay, so Sean, you want to move on to Wingham Parks? That goes to page 36. Okay, this is another one that right off the hop, I have applied that, that uh, reduction because of the overestimation on the uh, part time. So the, the proper number as far as the bottom line should at this point read $96,055. And that is opposed to the $100,900. Um, as far as pointing things of interest out, um, uh, the three that I've got highlighted to bring to, to uh, Council's attention are just surrounding materials and supplies. 
you'll see that there's materials and supplies, then there's building repair and maintenance, and then there's equipment repair and maintenance. So they're really quite self-explanatory. I think we've got 2,500 budgeted for uh, for materials and supplies associated with the grounds, you know, the upkeep of the grounds, and then of course any of our our uh, uh, anything specific to a facility or a, or a structure. We've got uh, we've got six thousand embedded in there. Um, which is consistent with last year's budget, and then another 4,500 for uh, equipment and related repairs. Should we have, because uh, we're operating a fair number of pieces of equipment, if we're getting something that will that'll cover those costs. Um, I don't know what else to bring to council's attention other than I probably should mention uh, the flowers and planters are in here again this year. We've, uh, both for Wingham and for Blythe, we put the tender out. We've got the responses back, and basically we're kind of telling them to hang fire until we get a bunch of approval. Because I know there was some, certainly some discussion about that last year. Um, all things being equal, I think uh, we're going to uh, take a different approach to the watering and maintenance of the of the flower baskets this year. Um, but as long as there's no immediate uh, concern over that, we, like I say, we did put the tender out, and we'll, we'll have to deal with that. So I just want to touch on a couple of things here because it's going to affect life too. Again, you, you've heard me state that um, along the river through the years, the trees and the shrubs and the weeds and everything is growing up. <clears throat> um, is there any chance in this budget that we can actually go back to or find some volunteers or how you do that to actually get that river and the trees and the shrubs in the parks trimmed properly and, and, and we can actually sit down on the benches and look out on the river instead of into what you guys call that dog weed or whatever it's called uh or we used to so, uh, <laughs> oh, <hog weed. laughs> the other the other interesting thing i'd like to point out too was uh uh walking along the river last year i actually came across homeless people the, the shrubs and and the weeds and everything have grown up so much that there were a couple of fellas living down in there uh, mm -hmm. uh, on the, on this side of the the dam. So again, it's it's, it's grown up enough we don't even know we have residents in there now. So I, again, it's just something that's pointed out to me. And, and the other thing that was pointed out to me, and I actually seen it too, was late October this year when there was icicles hanging down. We had somebody watering the flower plants on the main street wing. I actually got a couple calls over and in question and I wasn't even on council at the time. It was just running. So that was kind of weird for us. So those are just two things. Can you look at that? I, I would really, and, and I'm going to ask the same thing when we hit the bottom. Out. I'll ask it now. Uh, again, going back, I remember Brock on council saying that at one time it was beautiful along the river and that, and it seems to be growing in. So could we have a little more attention paid to that and uh, see if we can get it back to the way it was? I think I've got a better salary breakout built in here. And again, that ties to that whole discussion on salary. That would be the expectation uh, of this new parks and property uh, uh, lean hand is, is to have that that direct ownership, and that, uh, that single point of contact. Great. So my hope would be that we can restore, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. Nope, but I understand. Uh, you know, even being a resident, we walk the area, and, and I, I know what you're talking about. I've, I've witnessed it, and, and I think I said last night, there's things that I saw last summer that I wasn't particularly happy with. Yeah. And, and absolutely, in your own defense, I do not, I don't think any councillor expects to see everything turn overnight, um, at least if we've got a section in, in each, in in because uh, East Wallenach, they pretty well take care of their own little plots of land out there, but in the, two, in the village and in, in the town, even if, if the councillors could say, look, we have started here, we have heard what the public has said and, and we are working towards it. Nobody expects everything to be done in, in the first year. And actually, in, in keeping with that, we, we have just since we started coming up with this idea, we've, uh, we've had some very positive interaction with, uh, with the trails group here uh, in town and uh, friends of the Village of Life. Uh, they've, been, uh, they've been really good to work with and they've been kind of pointing out some areas of, of concern. So. I think as we move forward, we'll be able to strengthen kind of those uh, those relationships as well. Great. Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, 
to you, uh, Sean. Does the uh, the flowers and planters uh, that portion of budget is that where uh, the friends of the uh, village would asset or would ask for assistance from that from the flowers? Is that where the, that comes from? Well, that's the hanging baskets themselves. The, the flowers and planters in the budget. That's that's that piece. Um, we had been working with them over at the uh, memorial garden a little bit, and and uh, well, I'm sorry, the other park with the Karen at the corner. But, uh, the butterfly garden. Oh, the butterfly. Oh, the, yeah, okay. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's, there's the, the two parks, uh, the memory garden and then the ones the old cemetery. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That one there. So uh, you know, the the guys have been trying to help out and. and Friends of the village have been really good to, to communicate and they've given us quite a list actually. Even some of the trees, the, the nuisance trees, the liability trees. You know, so we've been trying to, to work with them. But no, but in the budget, the, that whole flowers planters line mm -hmm. is the hanging baskets for the for the trees. Other questions for Sean on that one? Not seeing any. Okay. So we'll carry on to Blythe Park Sim, Sean, page 37. So Blind Parks is extreme is, is very, very similar in its configuration. And I don't know if there's any specific other than um, under inspections and contracts, there is one additional piece. It's not a great amount of money, but we do have a small land lease in there to uh, infrastructure Ontario. Um, outside of that, was there any specific questions or is, as I said, it's it's extremely similar. It's just a duplication, basically. It's Trev, Trev first, and then uh, Kevin. So the the lease with infrastructure Ontario is the is the piece on the Greenway Trail. Is that correct? Or? I believe that's yeah. my understanding. Yes. Kevin. Uh, three years. Uh, the uh, on top of the expenditures, the uh, full time salaries. Pardon me. The full the first line, the full time salaries for the during through the park mm -hmm. budget. Uh, an increase from an act of eleven hundred dollars to ten thousand six hundred. Yes, sir. yes. Again, that's based on what I'm expecting to be using full time employees for under the new structure. Okay, I'm just a read. Yeah, that's just Rebecca. Any other questions? Moving along. Okay, so then we'll move over to the trailer park, page thirty-eight. Okay, trailer park. Um, there's not really much in here uh, to be said overall. Um, there's a kind of small amount of part time, a small amount of full time uh, dollars in there. Uh, a little bit of building repair and maintenance, and basically that's it. Outside of that, it's electricity. So, Sean, go ahead, Kevin. You go first. Uh, through you. Uh, Notice last. Uh, uh, through the last budget year and annual uh, actuals and, and, uh, and budgeted that uh, it's it's still at a loss yes and it's being run by the through the through the yes. agent um, do you know whether they're making a profit uh, there's a there's an agreement in place and, and there's a little bit of profit sharing so they uh, they split split the revenues and we get a portion they get a portion that's my understanding so I'm gonna I'm gonna follow up on that because I, I was the guy that made the agreement with the Ray uh, Hallahan and myself uh, for the town. Uh, we had a 50-50 uh, shared agreement uh, for after expenses, and I believe the very first year I think we both made eight thousand dollars or something like that. Um, in going back a few years, we on the town were only to do major. Uh, problems. For instance, if there, we were not going to do painting the bathrooms or cutting the lawn. We were just going to do tree removal. Should it become a health hazard? And that. So I have to say the same as what Kevin's saying. I'm not understanding uh, the the wages for that or the the two the two thousand dollar that you've got it here is the building, um, and it seems to be every year. Um, how 
I'm hoping that the Legion and ourselves are still making money at it. Surprised to see eleven thousand dollar loss on it. But have we got that where it should be then, or are we slowly starting to cut the lawn and slowly starting to do this and slowly? And would we have a guy down there inspecting every day in the morning for two hours? Or no, they. I met with them earlier, uh, early winter actually. They uh, they have their own contracts for taking care of the washers for doing the, uh, the lawn and that sort of thing. Uh, last year we had to do a lot of work on trees. We're expecting to have to do a little bit more cutting this year, uh, just some, and they don't handle any of that big stuff. So that's uh, one piece. And then we've also, we do the winterizing and that sort of thing surrounding the, oh, okay. uh, the washroom. So, I mean, this builds us a little buffer if we have to go in there and, and uh, and do a lot more cutting. You actually can see how many trees we had to remove because of that ash borer uh, along the parking lot of the region. Yeah. Actually, there was a vehicle that was damaged this year because of branch. So. so this this one here, even though right now we're, we're showing a bit of a loss, I, I view this one as the asset sitting on the book or wall worth the money spent. If you get rid of your assets, they're gone forever. Um, and I'm not sure how the, the, the town works on that, but from a business point of view, uh, assets on the books are well worth keeping. So just go ahead, Paul. Uh, I'm just wondering, um, taxes have been going up in town. Is there a cost for a rent? Has it been going up? By itself, with people that own the trailers, like I'm just curious. Yeah. Like, I'm not sure if our staff could handle that, as, or that would be up to the Legion. I think. Yeah. We don't have anything to do with that at all. The Legion, the Legion rents it and collects the rent and charges what the prices are, et cetera. And then, and then at the end of the year, they um, give us what their profit sharing, um, they give us a statement to tell us how much um, shared profit they've made, and that's what we show um, here. But they said they said all that we don't look after any of that anymore. That was the purpose of them at least taking taking over that part. That part. Yeah. And we feel that we're getting what's ours out of it. Like as I say, the taxes keep going up. I'm just making sure because trailer parks that's a big thing, money well, coming sure. in. Right? Well, sure, and that and even though Bernie's saying it's an asset. It, that's one of the things that you'll have to decide as council of whether you keep it or not. Yeah. It's something that you could certainly, if you wanted to, look at divesting yourself of. So it's it's something that council would have to decide. So just when you're thinking about that, just a couple other things I'll throw out is the fact that it does give the Legion, I don't know what it is now, but I, I remember when I was on council, it was about an $8,000 boost per year. Um, and... Uh, we were paying, if I, if I recall right, when the town was actually taking care of the whole thing, it was a thirty or thirty-five thousand dollar year loss for employees cutting the grass and, and all, all of it. So it's quite a change from when I was on uh, on council, and uh, so you want to keep that in mind mm -hmm. um, as we move forward, um, whether selling the asset and turning it into taxes with houses on it would be a better uh, go or whatever, but. Again, we are helping community members mm -hmm. stay viable at the okay. same time. I, I guess what I'm saying is just I'm just yep. wondering if we're getting the rent, fair rent, yep. from the people that leave their trailer there all year and go yep. south and then come back. Yep. Uh, it is, yep. yeah. I just hit that going from door to door. Yeah, there's some. So that's a conversation that maybe Sean or Donna could have with the Legion and, and make sure that they are keeping up with trailer yeah. parts around it. And, yeah, I understand that. Go ahead, Trevor. I'm, I'm wondering if that can be kind of part of the discussion when we have the discussion about the actual agreement. So the, the agreement was 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 moved or uh, extended for one year. Okay. Uh, so that's going to give us some time to the new council to, to kind of look at that more frequently, but also look at the uh, get her familiar with the operation. And then when the actual agreement comes back up for renewal, ask these specific questions to the legion about you know fair market value for rent and mm -hmm. and all that type of stuff and and our concerns about operating it and whatever the whole case may be i think we wrap it up into one nice teak package and and mm -hmm. have the have the negotiation and conversation as opposed to the discussion now and then you wait for 
six months or eight years, eight months to have the, the discussion with the agreement because the agreement has been extended. Yeah, and I totally agree with that. I didn't realize it was coming up within years. So Donna, we'll just let that go. Thank you for that, Trevor. Okay, so we'll move on to Campground B then, if that's um, next on the list, page 39. Actually, Donna, that, that's Vicky's, but I'll take out oh, uh, Parks uh, EW. Okay, perfect. Uh, okay, this is a very straightforward one. Um, Got thousand dollars in there for portables and five hundred dollars for materials and supplies, and that's it. Um, you'll see that I'm not tracking uh, salary, and right or wrong, it just seemed like we were going to spend a quarter to track a dime. So, you know, if aside from the rentals, we'll just if it's if it's needed, it gets it. You know, the guys the guys routinely uh, keep an eye on it and keep it trim. So, um, if there's no questions on that one. We can move on to Town Hall, which is page 12. So that's a bit of a backtrack. We're going to go back to page 12 on, on Town Hall because we're going to talk about the building expenses. Okay, and this one's uh, a little bit interesting. Um, okay, you will see a, a change in the salary dollars, and that ties back to that whole. Uh, allocation piece that we were beating on last night because we created parks and properties. Um, a lot of that is is one of our uh, individuals in particular where he used to be spread out into into rec, like more into the West Cap Center, and pull him back in. And the expectation, and actually what we're seeing, is that he spent a lot more time here. Um, so as we, we look at some of the expenditures, you'll see there is a transfer to reserve uh, that's identified there uh, within the budget for 25K. Um, and that will be something we can uh, we can discuss at some point in the near future. Uh, the $12,000 for insurance, I think I, I have to confirm that with Donnie yet. Uh, so we you're just getting the information in on that. So we, We'll be moving some of those dollars around. That may be adjusted on the second round. Now, the uh, the interesting ones uh, we've got building uh, repair and maintenance. I've got that at eleven k, um, and that uh, there's a there's a bunch of things associated with that. Um, just kind of catch my thoughts here for a second, so I'm not off on. Okay, so that's basically all our miscellaneous hardware and materials. Uh, that, that go into the facility uh, for its routine maintenance and upkeep. Um, I've got uh, 17.5 that's uh, sitting in, uh, in contracts. Contracts covers a bunch of things. It covers pest control, uh, the monthly and annual elevator inspections that are required, uh, cleaning uh, the cleaning contract, uh, generator testing that's uh, required annually, fire and security. So that basically contains uh, all of that uh, that contract piece in very short order. And as far as the building repair and maintenance, you may look at some of the historicals and say, well, it's up a bit. Um, the reason I did that, walk around the building. So even though I do have some capital that we'll talk about later with regard to the facility, there are things that, uh, that we're planning to do to the building on a day-to-day -day basis. It's, you know, when you see some of the work that's been done upstairs with the theater and, and, and even the outward facing features of the upper windows, it looks absolutely incredible compared to what it looked like a month ago. Every piece of trim on the sides of the buildings is in poor shape. I, I'm hoping to see them scraped and painted. Uh, you when know, you look at the, the, uh, the windows themselves, they need attention, they need it now. There's some that are in bad shape. So, I beef that up with the expectation that we would be able to, to put some sweat equity and some paint into the building that goes along with it. Um, are there any other specific questions on uh, on Town Hall? Because again, it's just that building expense piece. Kevin? Uh, through you, Reeve, uh, John. Uh, uh, I'm uh, 6330, the inspections and contracts. Yes. I'm uh, just wondering if you could explain the, the the deviance between the last couple of years being uh, budgeted at $1,500 and coming in at $22,017 and 
and then another budget of fifteen hundred dollars coming in twenty three thousand, and then you're budgeted to almost double that forty one thousand. Where are we? That's uh, 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 halfway down the exp expenditures. Walls near the bottom of the expenditures, uh, sixty three thirty. Oh, so sorry, Kevin. That's it. That was in my budget from last night. In that section, he's looking at the the portion down below, oh, okay. which is just the town hall piece. So my portion up above that forty one nine. You're oh, talking okay. about. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm I'm missing this um, Yeah, I'm just not following along. Either. No, that's fine. Fine. Okay, thank you. Sorry, request. Okay, we yeah, I'm, I'm specifically the twelve ten. Yeah, I think you answered that question last time. Yeah. But I can tell you again. Now. Yeah, no, I, I think I've got my answer. Okay. I apologize. Yeah. So, was there anything else on building of the town hall? Not seeing any. Okay, then Sean, if Page you want. 52 will be the uh, the next one, I think, for me, and that's uh, the Wing Library. Okay. Um, will you cover the Wing and um, the fire holes? Oh, okay, yeah, I guess I. Mm. Sorry, so they're page 13 next. Um, Marty would have covered the, the fire program part with you last night, and then Sean looks after the um, building part of it. Right, so. Uh, Looking at this, really, there's uh, as you can see, there's that that slightly heavier um, salary allocation for our full time uh, uh, labor, and the expectation is that he will be spending certainly more time in the facility. Um, going along with that, the building repair and maintenance, uh, I got it at four thousand, which is a twelve hundred dollar increase, uh, or sorry, decrease, but it's a slight increase over our actuals. Uh, because I would, I think we're going to be in a position where we can really have a better presence in these, in these buildings under the parks and property uh, banner. Um, inspections and contracts for Wingham. We've got the uh, generator that's built into that, and then uh, inside of that, just some public works uh, uh, equipment costs, and that's basically. <laughs> Now, the, the reason we show the, the equipment costs in fire hall is it's one of those ones that we have partners in. So we're normally we're tracking it there uh, in discussion with uh, Don about approving to actually show the costs in the budget. That way it's all reflected should uh, one, of our, uh, one of the fire partners want to see those numbers that are the end of the GI. So, yeah, that's why it's there where yesterday I was adamant that there was no machine in there. In this particular case, it's it's in our best interest to have it. So we, we put some uh, some dollars in there. And under the Blythe Hall, really, there's um, oh, Donna. The rental. Oh, okay. Thank you. It's under inspections and contracts. The forty-two thousand is the uh, is the uh, ESTC rental. <laughs> No longer ESD rental, it's fire. <laughs> the hand was going up. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, left off the page on YouTube. Sorry. Um, is there any other questions? <laughs> any questions? Not seeing any. Okay. So then do you want to move over to the police station cost, Sean, for the building? Uh, what number is that? That's page 16. I don't think we built very much into there, did we? We just basically covered uh, the month of February. And some hydro. Let me let me have a look. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Yeah, so we do have some full time salary uh, associated with it because obviously we've got to keep uh, keep working or keep it going. I've got a very small amount of uh, building repair, small amount of janitorial, and. Uh, the inspections and contracts will be uh, well. Actually, I should look at that because uh, you know, there's the uh, pest control. But uh, outside of that, that may be reduced. Any questions for Sean and Alan? Sean, just a couple things. Um, how many square feet would that be? 
Does it still have the the upper echelon it used to have? Yes, it's a bird pool shape. Is it? Yeah. The the upstairs uh, has been used as storage. Uh, it would take a little bit to be considered habitable. I think is is that a fair statement, Councillor Say? Have you been up there lately? I, I haven't, but uh, the roof the 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 roof issues in the at the police station that lasted about two and a half to three years uh, did some damage to mm -hmm. the the aesthetics. Nothing engine nothing engineering or uh, no structural wise but yep. there is aesthetics that needs to happen up in that area if you if, if anybody wanted to have it for for office space or whatever the case may be so the, the leak was taken care of we spent thirty thousand dollars and it worked oh i think we spent uh it was 11 or, it was 11 or 12, 11, 4, 11, 12. 000, yeah we got a very good deal on it and uh, i mean it wasn't the premium repair it was meant to uh to take care of the problem and yeah it's, it's bone dry any other questions for Sean? Moving on. Okay, Sean, so we'll move on to page 31, the daycare building. Sorry, did I take you out of order? Yeah. yeah. Apologize. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Okay, so some change in, in the salaries, uh, again, dealing with the allocations and uh, the amount of time that we're hoping to be able to spend there. Uh, there is some public work support built into the, uh, the budget. And then uh, basically we've got the very little change on uh, building uh, repair and maintenance. The inspections and contracts is something that uh, we, we based it on what we know to be fact right now but we are in the process of developing uh, an RFP to to uh, look at the, uh, the cleaning contracts for the township this will be a big one um, so you know we, we're in the process of really trying to nail down those costs uh, outside of that uh, very little in terms of change uh, that can be that can be noted here those, when you said inspections uh, for janitorial, do we do outside with that now, or do we have our own staff doing that? It's an external contract. It is. It is. Yes. And you're thinking about bringing it in-house or just looking at everything? They had already in the past done the in-house, and it really didn't, uh, it didn't produce favorable response results. Plus, you, you end up, one of my concerns, because we had considered it, you don't have that depth, so if you have sicknesses or you know, just absenteeism, it puts additional pressure on other other areas. So we're going to go to tender with it uh, and see if we can get. Uh, we're hoping to get a fairly aggressive response to it. Okay, great. Any questions for Sean? Okay, Sean. So then you have to move back to user pay, unless there's anything else that you. Um, that we have missed. Well, I think user pay would be it. Um, oh, sorry, library. Oh, libraries is yours too. Okay, pardon me. So we shall go to. Okay, we'll start with the, the William Library, which is page 52. Uh, okay, and as you can see, I've got that uh, the full time wages in here. Uh, and then outside of that, it's building repair and maintenance. Janitorial supplies, inspections, and contracts. There's very little has uh, has changed over previous years. Um, our total net increase uh, is what was under three thousand dollars. So, um, and that would that could really be put back uh, largely on the using our salaries. Again, this one will be included in that whole. Uh, in that whole cleaning contract piece, so that'll be that'll be one of the areas that we'll be incorporating into the, into the tender. Um, and then it should be noted that in, in the case of Wingham, uh, I'm sure everybody's aware that is our asset. That building belongs to us. Uh, the county pays us to um, uh, 
basically to lease the space on an annual basis. So if you don't mind me asking, and if we're going to contract right now, it's costing us 2300 to, if I understand this properly, clean it properly. Um, but you're budgeting $9,000 if you take it out to tender? There's uh, no, that, that's to do with our salary. So that's uh, our labor, cleaning, maintenance, electrical, that, that sort of thing. So the 2018 actuals, there's such a difference there. I know. Yeah, is it because it wasn't being tracked or we're just tracking it better or? We're certainly going to be tracking it differently. And for 2018, of course, again, we had that individual that was allocating much of his time to, uh, to the rec side. We have to pull it over here. As we go through the year, I may be sitting in front of you in 2020 showing a much different number. Okay. You know, so we'll be tracking it accurately and, and we'll see where his salaries are, are landing. Okay. And if I'm grossly overshot on that one, we'll have to, we'll have to follow that. Any questions for Sean on that? Go ahead, Trev. So not, it's not really a question for Sean. I guess the, the overall question that I have is that, you know, it's our building. The county leases the building from us. Has there been any adjustment in what that lease cost is to operate that service out of that building? Like over the past, what, when when it was that last looked at? Does anybody know? The county has looked at that and no one hasn't come out um, and hasn't changed in many, many years. Um, they did talk at one time of taking it away. Um, they don't actually, it's not um, an actual um lease per se in that it's so much a month they do pay us x a flat rate per year for uh, to offset our cost but obviously it doesn't completely cover our costs and and no you're right that hasn't changed for many years so i mean it's something bernie you can ask up around at the county but um, we have asked before um, for it, uh, that to be looked at and um, it's remained the same but we're happy that it wasn't taken away either can do that. Yeah, it's, it's, it, my, my position is it's a county service um, operated out of a wing out of a North Huron building. So no, no different than anybody else who offers a service. There's costs associated to that service. You know, we we take the we take the ownership and the building side of it, but you know the program side of it, if they're if they're thinking that you know our cost should be fifteen thousand to have that building. Maybe we need to relook at what that building looks like, and because it's not going it, to, it's going to be definitely more than fifteen thousand dollars to operate that building in a year. So, now I think those are conversations, um, not I guess not specifically to the library, but overall with the county as as to how they provide funding to off, uh, offer services of county services within municipal buildings. I think that's a that's more of a conversation, not necessarily specific to the library i'm thinking in general because you know, we we've had the conversation with the county about you know their 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 perspective on the airport and and, and a whole bunch of other things and how we fund, get funding for some of these county-wide services that are offered by north huron uh and and obviously compensated by north huron taxpayers so you know it's 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 a conversation but you know when i see three years at $15,000 and, and I suspect it's been more than five, probably closer to 10, that it's been at $15,000. My concern would be is that probably needs to be looked at, at least from a capital perspective. Kevin? Uh, just to add to, I uh, agree with, with uh, Councillor Sipes, uh, with a $15,000 uh, budgeted income on the revenue side, the budget alone from this year to the next year is being raised $13,000. So, I mean, it's, it's double of what we were getting. It's quite a large increase in, in, the, in a small budget. It's only a $30,000 budget. It's 25% to 30% increase. Mm -hmm. I, I agree there's something out of whack there. And on that, um, on that again is, is where Sean is putting the allocation for bodies that may not have been there were they're doing the physical work but they were allocated different and that's where i believe when we look at the next year's budget we're going to see more in line or you know what i mean so 
again, if Sean can maybe speak to that, but that's my understanding from last night's conversation that you're seeing a lot, like, because when I looked at this, first of all, I've got to be honest, but I was like, where did all this come from? But as he explained last night, that could be a truer picture at 9,000, but he really won't know until we get there. But having said that, yes, that's a, that's a big loss. Um, so, Sean, maybe you just want to touch on that a bit again on, on that, or did I explain that properly? Yeah, I, I believe you, you covered it well. Uh, it's just, you know, when I look at the 2017 budget number, 2018 budget number, and 2019 budget number, the, the variance isn't tremendous. It's, it's where we got into the actuals, and I, I don't have enough background with that piece to know if it was the way it was tracked and reported or if it was actual. And like I say, if, if it's been a gross uh, overestimation of the uh, of the amount of uh, personnel hours that are required there, then I'll have to make that adjustment. And it'll man that that adjustment will manifest itself as we go through the year. Mm -hmm. you know, another area will elevate because we've covered the the hours for the person. It's just where yeah. we've estimated them to be. Because honestly, to clean that building at 2,300 just wouldn't make sense to me, just for over the course of a year. It just wouldn't be enough money. Like, I'm going to try Trevor? The, the one thing that I think, you know, would, and I mentioned this last night, and that I think it needs to be part of the budget, at least at a high level, is to provide our us as counselors, but also the public to understand our overall salaries and wages as a municipality. Not, don't break it into departments. Here's what the total wages and salaries are. And here's the, here's the full-time equivalent people that would associate to those wages. Because I would argue, like everybody says, well, your wages are going up. Well, but, but wages going up, are two things. One, it could be just specifically CPI, cost increases, or it's actually more people. I, my argument would be we we as council need to understand, and the public needs to understand, what is it? Is it is it we're adding more people, or is it we are, or is it just the nature of doing business and having cost increases and, and pay equity and and, and that type of stuff that's causing our salaries and, and increases to happen. Because if it's added more people, if it's adding more people, then we need to argue the fact that why are we have the more people? Is it because of government downloading of, of, of that type of stuff? Or are we adding those people for to do certain jobs that we don't need them? And therefore, the conversation is a totally different conversation from, from five or ten years ago. We, you know, the conversation about having looking at salaries on a granular level, in my mind, doesn't provide the same value as if you looked at it as a whole thing. Because, you know, allocations from one to year, that's it depends on the senior manager. It depends on a whole lot of things that, you know, I think if you looked at it more in, in, in high level, we could answer some of those questions as opposed to what we're trying to do today. So, Donna, if I'm understanding Trevor right now, and I'm going to agree with him on this, I think what you're saying, Trevor, is this year we have 50 full-time and we have 150 part-time, and it's costing us X amount of money. Can you backtrack that for five years so that five years ago we had this amount of people and this amount of part-time? is that, and, and therefore, we're understanding that we still have basically the same amount of people. It's the cost of, of life, which goes up for all of us, or I, that'll give you what you're looking for, will it not, Trevor? Well, it's not, I don't think it's just for me. I think it's just a, a oh, for fact us. for, for a council, but also the public. Yes. For them to understand, because, you know, 75 to 80% of the municipal budget is salaries. Yeah. So we need to, that's the, that's the, the number that I think everybody needs to truly understand. Yeah. And, and it's not, what are they? It's it's how many full time equivalent people do we have, and is that the right? Because again, uh, growth would determine what that need is. But there's other reasons why why employees get hired. Yeah. It's because of downloading and resources and a whole bunch of other things. So those are the types of things I think this council needs to look at and needs to be presented to the public, so they get more are more informed on a on a more high level as to what is our budget for salaries and wages as opposed to this individual departments nobody really understands well that 
there, somebody says salary full time. Well, no, there isn't a full time person sitting at the library. This person is moving all over the all over the municipality, and that's just a cost allocation. Yeah. So I think that's the part where I think the public needs to be more informed, and that's why I think that piece, if it was part of the budget, at least at a high level, we could have a high level discussion, and at least the public could be notified then. Yeah. So a direction of Kevin. Uh, go ahead, Kevin. Chris. Chris, sorry. Um, yeah, um, I agree with you. Councillor said this. Um, I would rather see at the first, our very first budget, the uh, Township of North Huron. There should be a line salaries. Yeah. With the sixty-three hundred series, sixty-one hundred series. Um, they should be there, and that's what we're seeing up and you know going steadily up because of different reasons. Um, seeing them in each of the individual budgets, I don't care. It doesn't mean anything to me. Like, um, Sean, you can tell us man hours perhaps or, or something, but it doesn't mean anything. It's I want to see it as one lot, well, three or four line items. Do the full time, part time, and benefits, and what have you, and plain and simple because they all have different. Well, I guess each each head would know um, the, the level that the individuals are at and how their scale would would increase. But that all comes to you, right? We present that every year in uh, in the budget. Um, presentation. Okay, so, I'm not here yet. No, we haven't yet, but it is definitely. Would help us. Yes. Okay. Well, certainly. To go back the five years, I can do that. I won't get that done for no. a little bit, but um, certainly we do present that in the um, as part of. I was just looking to see if I could grab one of the presentations from last year to uh, show you show you that. Um, but the um, the wage allocation, 75% is, it's not 75%. So I will just, I was just going to go and look that up for you. So while someone carries on there, then I can. So what right. you're looking up is the fact that we have this many full time, this many part time. We don't care where they're working and right. trace it five years ahead and say now at this at 2019, yeah. we're sitting with this many full time, this many part time. And this is the cost that changed each year, which I mean, it's, it's the cost of living. Um, but that gives that's the, I think that gives the council what they're looking for. Well, what kind of manager like it takes a full you do full time just trying to um, itemize it all. Instead, you've got how many employees and you've got to keep them working every day. Plain and simple, they go here, there, and everywhere. But your job is to keep them busy, and that's a big job. But for you to kind of itemize it all out, like. Feel sorry for you. <laughs> you should see he's a beautiful spreadsheet. It's got a oh, I know, but I, I, yeah, I give you credit for it. But holy smokes, it's uh, a lot of energy spent. Anita, for all of you. Um, I appreciate it very much what Sean is doing and what everybody's doing with the uh, part time and allocation from everybody to the 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 different departments because it gives you a lot of in-depth uh, vision and I think if you have just one thing and you're just wondering oh who does this and who does that what's going yeah. on I, I really appreciate it yeah this is very, very I like the the I think you need the overall view too but this in-depth information I think it's very valuable yeah this is very important for us because this makes a difference of a one or a 15 percent tax increase it's for the public that and, and I know what Trevor's talking about because how many times we've heard that the North Huron trucks are passing each other on the main street. And there's three of them lined up here and there. Um, but you're taking care of that because we're, we're consolidating uh, some of the workforce. Um, and that, and then, but I think uh, I think we're on to something here, folks. And I think we're going to leave that in Donna's hand. And it's yeah, not yeah. something for tonight. No, oh, gosh, no. no. It's going to take manpower to do all oh, that. Yeah, yeah. But there is, a, there is in the, so say, for example, I just quickly pulled up 2017. So in 2017, um, as part of the presentation to the public, I noted then that the total wages and benefits were 5,567, which was 30.19% uh, of the total budget. So every year that's always been in the, in the presentations to um, the public the night we pass the, yeah. the uh, But I, 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 was, I was making it a little bigger. I was gonna that. say you were giving but, me. But what, I, but, what my, but what that doesn't tell you though, 
But what that doesn't right, tell you is it doesn't tell you full time equivalent mm -hmm. and how it's comparable five years ago right. or six years ago because you know we talk about this all the time and municipalities hear it all the time is that we see all these employees and thirty percent of my budget's going to salaries. Well, why is it so hard to get a pothole fixed or why is it so hard to clean my driveway like it's or clean outside my my road? Like these are the questions we need to ask. And it's not always because we don't want to do it, it's because of the other resources that are required. So that's the part I think, you know, public needs to be informed, and the only way they're informed is by us informing them. Okay. So, anything else? Oh, well, I, I guess, um, Don, I think Donna would comment on it, because I'm one of the, been here a long time people, it's, it ebbs and flows what council looks for as well, because previously they wanted to understand what actual operations were costing throughout the town so that we could come up with a, a figure for them that how much does it cost to operate this area or that area or another area. And so by that is that breakdown of taking that person because that person doesn't sit at the library all day and work. They're at the daycare, they're at the library, they're here and they're doing you know the stuff so I think that you can ask for and get what you need to help you explain our budgets to the public in the best way that you have but the questions that weren't being answered before were well how can we know how much it costs to clean the roads in a year or how much does it cost to have someone work in the li library so that's why you've got the more detailed breakdown and saying with my budgets previously I could give you one side and tell you totally how many full and part-time people we have but then that doesn't give you the information about which site is the most viable or not so so maybe what we're looking at is just an overview and we've talked about that in the past too Donna like mm -hmm. a, a, an overview budget like a big picture budget but then you're getting your line by line budget so it, it's kind of been driven by council in the past too for their knowledge purposes to help explain where everybody is and what they're doing today. Yeah. And it's much needed. Yeah. Anything else? Shall we move on? Yeah, so Sean, if we can go to user pay now. So if we go to uh, sewer first and start there. Hey. Sorry, which one did we miss? Library. Library. Oh, sorry. I thought you were done. No. <laughs> okay. So, so Sean, the, go the ahead with that, and then Kevin will find it. It's out. a very straightforward one. Um, we receive a revenue of nine thousand nine hundred ninety-six dollars from the county uh, to operate it. We're currently paying. Uh, $1,122.50 based on the uh, most recent uh, adjustment per month um, for the uh, right. for the rental, for the lease. It's a one year automatically renewing uh, lease. So we've just stepped into the <coughs> second term of the first full year. And uh, it's clearly outlined as to how that works. So you see the uh, the fifteen thousand five hundred and seventy two in there covers that lease plus some uh, some cleaning contract, but that's something that uh, Vicky and I are, are going to be. But we have been discussing. There's certain things that she may be able to uh, uh, to help with with her crew that might reduce our overall contract cost. Uh, so we are still working on uh, maybe narrowing that or tightening that. Because it is, uh, we lose a little bit of money on it, so we'd like to actually not lose a little bit of money. Kevin, uh, did we uh, did we lose some employment there, employee or employees in there? No, this is to do with what we we had pulled rec back over to rec, and I had taken on it because it's a property. But now we're looking at it, and we're saying and there's there's some one-off cases where. It might just make sense in the case of the Black Library. It's it's a block and a half from uh, from the community center. So she, her, and I have to talk about how she may use uh, uh, Dave and uh, Mike to to take care of that cleaning piece and, and saves us another little bit of contracted services. Vicky, your worship, just 
we're, it is a transition year, but we're trying to work out what's the most efficient way to do things and what makes the most sense. So um, we're still working through. Yeah. So this on the second round, you may see that 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 fifteen thousand drops. <coughs> we're, we're trying to work with the parts on. That answer your question, Kevin. Um, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? We don't see any. Okay, so Sean, if you want to go to page twenty-six to sanitary. Yes. Okay. Now the next two uh, that we're going to talk about, sanitary and water, they are what's commonly and affectionately referred to as user pay. So that's as it says that the costs that we see right here are recovered through uh, through the water and, and wastewater bills that go specifically to the people using it. So if you're not in the system, you don't pay. Um, and basically. This contract reflects the Veolia contract, but it also um, covers the Veolia contract, but it also includes some administrative costs because uh, obviously there's a there's a lot of functions associated with water and wastewater, not only in the oversight of the contract um, uh, and some external assistance to the contract, but also the, the water billing and the monitoring and, and that sort of thing. So when you look at the administration piece, you'll see that there's um, there's full-time salary in there. Now that is uh, a portion, well, I'll tell you that is, that's, a, uh, that's a portion of myself. That's some of Donna. Uh, the, uh, our CAO is, is included in that, as well as uh, front office administrative staff. Uh, so there's, there's a number of, of City Hall uh, individuals that are associated with the operation of the facility on one level or another. So that's captured there. Um, uh, insurances, there's nothing we can really do about that. Now, that one interesting thing to point out to uh, to Council is this line 4162.92 for miscellaneous expenses. You see $12,500 in there. Um, the way the Veolia contract reads, they pay their fee or we pay them a fee and you can see it further down in, in the case of uh, wastewater it's 265,197 for this year but the first $25,000 of capital work that they put into our facilities is covered in the contract as is the nature of water and wastewater facilities 25,000 is pretty light so I budget some additional money because typically they seem to be coming in at uh, 35, 40,000 uh, for their capital. That way, when they come and give me the year end bill for the additional capital, we have some funds to cover that. So you'll see that embedded both in the water and in the wastewater side to make sure that in no way, shape, or form are we either A, coming in under budget, or, or B, telling them that we're not approving capital upgrades. You know, they, they've been everything through us. Um, at a certain cost threshold, but we just want to make sure that we're properly funding the facilities. Um, other, uh, other points of interest now, when you look at uh, both the Wingham and Blind Sewer, there is some um, materials and supplies worked into, into that. Uh, and what we've done is, uh, of course, the contract covers certain areas, and, and certain areas are exempt. So. We, uh, we incorporate some funds in here to, uh, I'll use a perfect example. Uh, uh, if you were in Blythe, you might have noticed that there was a contractor parked outside of the pump house for a couple of days last week. The facility upgrades are not included in, in the contract. We had some problems with, uh, with trusses in there. So we had him go in and beef up the, the roof structure. I had the funds to cover those uh, that through that, that line. So it allows us to, to stay ahead of that. Um, and then the other one that's in here is uh, distribution and collection maintenance. Uh, so we put that in to make sure that we've got funds to cover water main breaks and sanitary sewer repairs. You'll see that our resources are pulled, our, the, the sucker truck, the vacuum truck is used. Uh, we make sure our guys are working hand in hand with the OLA, which keeps our overall costs down. Uh, so that's built into there so that we have enough funds to cover those, we'll call them almost catastrophic failures. 
So that's built into the contract as well, in both water and sanitary. Uh, so that, I think, covers the, the sanitary sewer side. Is there any specific questions to this one uh, before I flip the page? Right, Paul? Yes, I have a, on Braemar agreement, I see it's can, can, and can. I'm just curious, that's out of township. <coughs> I'm just wondering, uh, that's just for water, I take it they get, right? No, yeah, but that's just for sanitary sewer. They, uh, they're not hooked to our water system, as I understand. <coughs> they do pay a fixed rate or fixed fee for sanitary sewer. Well, I, there's a, a hundred people there, and I know what I pay a month for. My, it, it's five hundred dollars. Like, I'm just wondering when that's been that that same price for so long. I'm just curious. Um, he's getting a pretty good deal. Yeah, we can pull the terms of that contract out for you and mm -hmm. um, and show you what they are. So just just on that one again, when I was on council uh, last time around, I believe this one did come up, <coughs> and I, if I recall, it went by household. So they had him down as a household, and he was paying a household, and I believe we bumped it up to as if it was four households, because I think twenty five. Sorry. So he's paying equal as if he had 25 house, household usages. I believe Westcast was involved in the change too because we had to make some change to Westcast. I'm going to let Donna pull that information out, but we went through that when I was on council too because, and uh, so that's he back did, eight he, years ago. Yeah. It's oh, seven, it's many more years yeah. than that. No, I was on council when we did that. So. But when they hooked up. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Donna has to then check the agreement on the hookup because I'm not sure how that financially worked too. So again, this is one of those deals where it looks straight and it doesn't look right, but we want to make sure that I believe just, uh, there was just curious. Yeah. yeah. So you know that information can be brought forward, and, and, and it's a good one, Paul. I think Chris was next, and then Kevin. Yeah. Um, Sean, I'm just hoping that uh, I didn't miss this. There's a bit of two 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 hundred and ten thousand profit on this. Is that, did you say that you wanted that in case of the catastrophic event or would you maybe not pull from the uh, reserve that 159? Sorry, if I can answer that. Um, sorry, so you have to take, this is the operating page, you have to add in the capital page and then it balances to zero. So the oh, capital, okay. not, we haven't come to capital yet. Okay. But once you add the capital, for sewer to the expense for sewer, it equals the sewer revenue. We haven't come that far yet. And the same on the water page. Yeah. I'm not sure, uh, through your reading, I'm not sure uh, who this question will go to, but the on the uh, on the revenue side, uh, when it states the uh, like the Wingham residential and the Blythe residential, is that when they when they do the budget, is that just on the the, the the rate they're being charged, and so, then it's split over that. And then the, all, well, I'll finish my question yeah. because for sure. But the uh, it just seems to be there's there's always more money taken in than when that was budgeted. Right. In, just, yeah. in right. some, uh, not in all cases, but uh, just in this year, uh, you know, uh, Wingen paid less than budgeted, and Blythe paid more than budgeted. Just, just, is that a fluid? So what happens is meet, Wingham is a meter, so we never really know how much how many meters people are going to use. So they're built based on meter on their meter readings. So we use um, we use you know data to gather when we're making the budget. But you know one year if, if it's really wet, they might not water their lawns. The next year they they could water their lawns. So Wingham in particular is is hard to to uh, budget to know but as i said we use some estimates and stuff so then you have things like uh, new customers coming on or you do have um, sometimes you have people if they meet the criteria and they're gone um, they can have their water turned off at the curb so then you don't have a bill for them so there's a number of factors but um, for the uh, rates going up we're in year five of our rate study that we have done and so then uh, we'll be working on a new rate study for the next five years. And as I said, Blythe and East Royal Notch are flat rate, where Wingham has a flat rate component, a base rate, but then they're metered on top of that. So it fluctuates greatly. So 
So if there's an increase, that means there's some more people added to the system? Um, it could, or in Wingham, or it could mean that they're just using more through the meters. But, yeah, I was just trying to figure out how the $11,000 increase over the budget for Blythe, whether they were just being, whether it was a flat rate or how the, how they budgeted that number. Yeah, so in 18, so in 18 for Blythe Residential, um, we based that budget on the previous year of 17, the actual came in at 125. So then the 18 budget was the 125, and then the actuals came in more at 130. Um, and so then this year we bumped it up to 131 based on last year's 130. So there are a couple of properties in Blythe that are metered. Um, not many, so they fluctuate on us as well. So if you follow that line across, that's where we got those numbers from. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, the numbers the numbers make sense. So I just usually you don't get more money in than what you budgeted. <laughs> well, if they use more water, like in Blythe, as I said, for the few that have meters, but Wingham, it it definitely happens because. Um, depends on the weather. Whether if it if it's really dry, we get a lot more money in because people are watering when they can and such. So that makes just, sense. Just just before you go, I just want to ask a question then because I just heard that Wingham is metered, mm -hmm. Wyeth is not. Right. Is the surrounding communities that that we that feed into us, Morris Turnberry and uh, Central here, are they metered? I don't so, know. why would we have half half the town metered and half not? Like, so that was that predates amalgamation back in the days when Wingham installed water meters many, many, many years ago. And why I didn't? And so, over the years that I've been here, we've tried. I think there was at least three grant opportunities where we tried to uh, reapply and tried to get meters in July, but we were never successful on the priority list to get a grant because of obviously it's quite a capital cost to install them. So um, we have tried to, to meter them, but we've never gotten any grant money to do it. So could we look into the new hookups then? Because if they're, they're running all new, uh, piping and that, wouldn't that just be part of the construction cost to, to meter them? To add a meter? I'm not sure um, whether we add meters on them in Blythe or not. And yeah, I'm thinking also surrounding areas. Like, I, I'm just curious of, of our contracts with, and this isn't just one, this we have contracts with for sure for two. Um, it just, to me, I didn't realize that only one town was metered, and to me mm -hmm. that just, well, that's a little off. If, I, if you don't mind me saying, why would, why do we, why does we both have flat rates, but these guys are paying more? Because I get a pretty big water bill. Um, so if somebody just look into that and maybe just get back to it. And if it's a costing situation, so be it. Uh, the, the price of putting the equipment in does not uh, validate the amount of money we're going to get back out, then, then we're definitely not in a position to even look into that this year. No. It's just something moving forward. Um, yeah, go ahead. Three, Reef, um, Donna. I just noticed there's a blank there for the transferring to long-term reserve for the actual 2018. Has it just not been posted yet? Right, or? not been posted okay. yet. Okay. Yeah. 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 Any other questions? Okay. Okay, so we'll move on then to water, which is on the next page of 27. Okay, uh, this will be the this, this will be remarkably similar to the to the sanitary sewer. Again, you see that there's salaries uh, under the administration piece, that there's that whole salary piece, uh, in this case, 667. That reflects um, North Huron administrative uh, personnel that are associated with the water system, uh, be it in monitoring, billing, any, any portion of it. Um, there is some money in training and uh, training travel workshops, and that's uh, specifically for the upkeep of my uh, water, wastewater collection and distribution licenses. There's a regulatory requirement uh, on an annual basis for training. Um, 
when we go down the miscellaneous expenses again i think i touched on that uh, obviously for the water side it, we beef it up a little bit more and that offsets uh, any additional capital charges that uh, we may be building for through uh, veolia uh, you can see the veolia contract uh, value there of 397,796 uh, sounds like a lot of money but in reality um, the cost of operating a water and wastewater system is, is quite high uh, and I think we had had some conversations surrounding this there's a tremendous value in in having this contract piece because there's so much regulation surrounding how you operate your water and wastewater systems and who can even touch a valve. This way, uh, the township is never in a situation where we're, uh, we're falling behind and being able to recruit or, or keep licensed operators. Veolia has a massive pool of, of those resources. If for some reason they have retirements or illnesses or whatever, they can, they can pull from other locations to make sure that we're uh, we're compliant because the ministry is very stringent on who is physically in contact with your water and these water systems. Um, now, moving on, uh, let's see if there's anything else uh, that's of interest. Uh, you got down here under Wingham Water and then Blythe Water. Uh, you do have the uh, materials and supplies and the inspections and contracts. And that is, uh, again, as I mentioned on the other side, uh, any external, any functions associated with the operation that are external to the VOLA contract. Uh, you know, so um, it can be something as simple as uh, paving. Like we cover a bunch of paving every year that's associated with water main breaks. That's not something that should be, you know, when we, uh, we have to tear open a road to fix a water main, those costs should not be borne by the rate payer. That's, that's a function of the, uh, the user pay system. So that's, that's something that's captured in here as well. And then you'll see that I've also got the distribution uh, repair uh, piece that's built in here as well. That we cover all the costs associated with uh, uh, bringing resources, trucks, equipment into repair water uh, should it break. Is there any questions specific to, to water? I'm not seeing any. Oh, Trevor. The only question I have is the, it just seems odd to me about how we, how we budget electricity in the user pay system. Um, you know, it's, I would assume that, you know, especially when you look at the budget for waterworks, you know, I, I'm looking at this as, as granular at, at this budget but I'm not sure how it if it's sanitary sewer and and storm tie into this at all but the the electricity costs in the both the Wingham water and the Wyeth water are substantially higher than actuals I don't know whether that's an allocation concern or that's just the way that we budget I I, I don't know that we actually just threw you we just had that conversation and <clears throat> I have to go to Veolia now to ask them to go and get a meter reading. We've been in situations in the past where they, the actuals were not appropriately reflected and then at some point down the road we hit with a massive uh, adjustment. You know, so Donna actually came in worried about that uh, yesterday I think and we've got to go and uh, ask them to read it then we're going to get a hold of the stereo and I go one to make sure that our actuals are are appropriate. So, so yeah. So, so in saying that, I, you know, I've I, I've had clients where they get that thing. There, there needs to be, you know, I think to me there needs to be some accountability back and, and some issue with Hydro One or West Air or whoever the case may be that says, well, I'm going to read your meter. I'm going to read your meter once every quarter or once every month. If you decide not to read it. And charge me a flat rate. Why? Why all of a sudden then do I have to bear the the, the pain? Because I'm assuming you're. The assumption is you're you're reading my meter, not not the fact that you do this and you say, oh, we got to read our meter. You got to read. All of a sudden, no, we haven't. 
oh, I haven't read it for seven months, and here's your $20,000 bill on top of that. So, you know, part for me is, you know, my concern is it, is if that's a concern from an operational perspective, I think we need to be be proactive with sending some some firmly lettered writing to West Area and then the says, well, we're part of the ownership of this said operation. We need to be some, there needs to be some accountability to making sure that like bills are being sent out accurately, not estimated because people base our function on, and operations on true value, true dollars. And if we're not getting that, no different than the West Stereo billings of the street, those street lights, that's a problem. Like, because now you're finding these out now and it's, it's a big issue. And I think we can't, we can't be going on assumption that we, our assumption is that we're getting meter readings, but we're actually not. So I think that's a, I think from an operational perspective, if that is a concern, I think we need to voice those concerns up the up the government food chain. I think is where I would. Think. So, Dwayne, will you um, will you talk to Bart about that, or will you uh, will leave it in your hands and the council would like feedback on that at one time? Yeah, everyone note down to talk to Bart. Okay, great. Thank you very much. It's it's Hydro One that's the bigger problem. Oh, absolutely. It's Hydro One. Don't talk to Bart. <laughs> yeah. well, so I, I think. About I think, I think it's a utility question yeah. at all. Like I'm not specifically saying or any either one or West Area. I'm just saying if they're sending out estimated billings, that they need to be. And I'm sure on the bills it says estimated, but you know, when somebody in accounts payable isn't going to isn't relaying the information on to Sean or operations that says, well, by the way, we just yeah. got an estimated bill. That's it, it, it's not getting back to operationally to ensure that we're getting proper accurate reading. That's all. Yeah, I think if you're paying somebody that's not taking a look at what you're saying. But, well, did I see that all out? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Donna. Okay, so we're at about quarter to nine, and I just wanted to know before we launch into um, we have two small ones, which would be economic development and policing. Um, but then we also have Vicky's. So I just wondered, are you up for staying till 9.30 so we can push through and, and uh, get Vicky's on? Or, or um, do you want to just do the two small ones and call it a night? Or yeah, what do you want to do? Council, what's your suggestion? Keep going. Keep going? Yeah. I see a lot of nods saying yes, so let's keep going. Okay. okay. So, um, do you want to launch in, Vicki, or do you want us to do the other two small ones first? Why don't we like them? Okay. Well, we might as well launch in then. Sure. So, um, if we want to get started, then what I was going to get started with you then, Vicki, was Campground B, is where um, they were leaving off on page 39. Okay, and I'll put it up on my screen for you as well. All right, thank you. Um, just a couple things I just wanted to um, talk about, especially after listening this evening to some of the questions that's come forward um, about the allocation of wages and um, surpluses and things like that. So, um, again, uh, I mentioned it when, when Sean was talking about it as well. Um, 2018 was a transition year for the department um, and more than just the restructuring of things. So um, there were some staff changes that occurred, uh, which kind of skewed the operational numbers. We had a couple part-time staff leave um, in uh, earlier in the year done at the Blythe facility that wasn't replaced until late in the fall. Uh, the director left. Um, I believe it was May, and then I didn't come on board until uh, October 22nd, I think. So that's uh, actually affecting some of the numbers as well, because in the budget, um, one of the things uh, that I, that the way the budget is laid out for the department and things is that um, staff wages are divided up over many, over the different budgets that, that are presented for you. And things and that was one of the things Sean and I were also trying to deal with because the former director she had some hours that were allocated under say the museum or under um, Memorial Hall or, or parks or whatever so 
So the numbers you're going to see, it, it's going to look higher because those numbers have to be pulled back in into the actual recreation department and not, uh, you know, uh, some hours over here and some hours over there and things because of the, the broad responsibilities that she had. <clears throat> um, another thing that uh, I want to touch on, uh, especially with wages and things, and, and mention again, was that the, the uh, there were... Uh, changes to wages based on the, the pay equity uh, study that was done. Um, that also affected the wages. And um, to also point out, uh, again, that Sean and I are still working on some of the details of the day-to-day -day operations. And, uh, and other than that, that uh, really that no additional staff have been hired. It's just we're reallocating where the wages are charged. Are, you know where they're being billed against the departments that are being billed against. Um, at the the uh, presentation I did uh, for orientation and things, um, uh, Councillor Faulkner had asked about you know um, fresh you know being new here. Did you know what are some of the things I see? Like he was talking about a fresh perspective and things. And what are some things that I see here that um, you know could be improved or could be changed or that different and things um so i just want to make a few comments on that because i have had the weekend to think about it um you know some of the things that i coming here and things and seeing municipality and the size of municipality and things it's there's a lot of facilities here there's a lot of facilities here um overall not just in rec but a lot of facilities that this municipality is having to look after and um you know i'm trying to get my head around this whole catchment area of things because we are servicing outside of our municipality, and and those other municipalities are paying in toward it. But but you do have a lot of or a lot of um, facilities that you're looking after, and things, and which is going to affect uh, a lot of your costs and things. And I'm not sure when the last time some of those agreements were revisited uh, for recreational facilities and how much is being paid in. Um, Donna may be able to answer that. I, I don't know. Um, and things. Um, another thing is with the facilities and things is, you know, as you've heard, um, you mentioned a few times, this is, is that the recreation master plan will help us in determining the level of service, uh, the number of facilities that we're going to need or that we should have to service, service um, our community. Um, another item that came up tonight, you, you we touched on it a bit and things was the trailer park. <coughs> trailer park is unusual. It's it's not something that you would that I've ever seen um, anywhere else. It's kind of unique, I think, uh, unless it's unless it's different in this county. Things be more rural, but I've never seen a trailer park run by a municipality. So that's that's unusual um, for me. Um, the airport's another one. Um, even the museum itself, after going on that tour and the scale or the magnitude of it, that was overwhelming. And it's, it's great. It's amazing the stuff that's in there, but that's that's another another area. Um, some uh, other things having two theaters. You've got this theater upstairs, and you have um, Memorial Hall. That's unique as well. And um, just on the operational side, I don't believe we subs provide any kind of subsidy for um, individual, like low-income individuals and things. And, and you do see that at other municipalities that they'll provide a small amount of a pot of money on the side and things for participation in recreational programs um, that are, if they participate in the municipality and things. So that's something I've noticed um, and then uh, the last thing is kind of uh, staffing. The staffing level of uh, the recreation department, um, it, it's, I, I'm really surprised at how much they're able to do with the number of staff they have. I, I hear everyone talking about, you know, the cost of staff and the comments about the number of staff that's here and things, but honestly, I, I could not believe we're running the number of staff that we're using, just <clears throat> talking recreation operators and things that we're, we have at, at our two complexes. I'm just kind of 
just astounded that that yes. we're offering. We have two full time <clears throat> operators at the Wingham facility and two part time operators. And then at Life, we have a part, and I'm not, we have a manager here, and we have a super, another manager in, in Life, but we have two part time operators down there. I am really amazed at that because I was saying, well, don't you have students? Don't you have kids working here to help clean and do this and do that? Because even before Wilmot had their complex, we had a pool of part-time staff, kids usually, that are working to help do things. And no, they don't have it. And so I was really amazed at that and, uh, and amazed at you know, all the different things they were doing and things. So um, could things be done better? Possibly, um, you know, there's certainly there, you know, I've seen some things that are um, could be done better, could be done better. But, you know, as I understand it, that they were being pulled in all these different directions and things to go to this facility, that facility and things. So kind of bringing them back into those complexes will help to uh, make things better in those in those facilities and things and improve and able to dedicate the time because one of the things they haven't been able to do is preventative maintenance and things. So, so those are just uh, uh, some comments um, I wanted to bring forward because I did I did think about it uh, quite a bit over the weekend and um, just thought I would add that in tonight before we uh, started through the budget process. So, um, so the first one up is the uh, the black campground. Um, I don't know if you want to go line by line, basically, because a lot of the budgets do seem similar and things. Um, um, you'll notice that uh, we're budgeting uh, less revenue and things, and that's basically because of uh, the festival was agreed not returning. Um, wages, uh, again, uh, just touching uh, based on the wages of things. It's it's part of its uh, our actuals and. You know what we had budgeted before and then what our actuals are and what we're budgeting in 2019. Um, 2019 wasn't based off our actuals it was based off of the previous budget because we had lost staff down there and um, and wasn't uh, doing some of the work that needed to be done because we didn't have the staffing to do it so um, the actuals did come in quite a bit lower um, your salaries or the salaries uh, Sorry, not salaries, but the uh, parks and properties have put in uh, some wages in there as well uh, because they'll be looking after the uh, grass cutting at the facility, which they've done in the past, if I understand that correctly. Correct, okay. Um, so that's in there as well. Uh, benefits, it's a percentage of the wages uh, that you'll see. So you'll see benefits broken down full time, and then you're going to see parks and properties there as well. Um, thank you for anything. Now, one of the things that uh, I should point out too is, is you're going to notice on each of the budgets with the advertising and things we were down. Part of that is because the director, when the director left, there was a lot of downloading that occurred onto the staff and things. And because of the extra work on the staff, they just didn't have the time to do all the things that they needed to do or was supposed to do. Um, I had a meeting with them this afternoon um, and just a regular staff meeting and I talked about some of these things uh, with them as to why we were under budget in a lot of areas and another point that they made was that the budget didn't get approved until quite late last year so they didn't do a lot of things because they didn't have the time that's the other thing that uh, came into play so because um, I, I, when I first looked at it, honestly, I was just like, why are we so under budget? I didn't understand, you know, what had happened in, in 2018 that could, you know, make, make us be, you know, result in us being that much under budget. Training was another thing. So I know I'm kind of talking more in a broader sense and things, but it, you'll see, you'll see it. Uh, there's a, a trend through all the budgets that uh, there's going to be certain areas and things. Kevin has a question. No question. Uh, on the, uh, the uh, budget allocation for 2019 for the live campground, you see it's, it's uh, significantly higher than than the the actual. Um, I'm just wondering what what's budgeted for that. 
for that increase? What what what's the plan? No, no, oh. uh, just just the. Uh, so they didn't do a lot of the things that they were. They were uh, the one thing that scares the budget of is the thirty-three thousand dollars that came from the transfer to revenue or transfer to the revenue in two thousand and seventeen. That's what's what, what obscured the budget from actuals. From transfer to, for uh, transfer to reserves. To reserves. So that's thirty-three thousand. Yeah. So that that miscued the 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 uh, actual from the budget that put it over. The next year was budgeted less than the budget before, and it came in twenty thousand dollars less than that. But your budget request for two thousand nineteen is for fifty percent more than what the actuals were. I'm just wondering what what you plan on doing. So if you if we go down the, if we start going down line by line, you're going to see that you know full time salaries are up a bit. That's based off of uh, the budget for previous years and it includes any changes from from the pay equity uh, review as well as a two percent increase, uh, which is that CPI or cost of living that we keep referring to. Um, part time wages. Um, it's up as well. Uh, we're going to have to use a little bit more part-time staff down there because of uh, Dave uh, going away for his surgery and things and things. So we've we've allocated some additional time there as well, and that's you'll see that uh, especially from actual over over to that. Um, but parks and properties, um, you, if you look at that, that's a much higher amount than uh, previously. I'm not sure if Sean can speak to that because that has uh, you're going from um, $2,900 up to $10,600 um, and benefits uh, on top of that. So that's quite a bit higher in the budget itself. And that, um, yeah. Yeah, Sean's going to need to pull out that allocation sheet and while he's doing that. We'll go down and look at it. So advertising again, actuals, it was, it was, if you compare it to actuals, the $85 was spent versus $850. Some of that advertising has to do with uh, staffing if, if, and the way that uh, costs are broken out, but it's also advertising the campground. My very first, it's funny, it's a funny story about this because my very first contact with the public up here was an email from a black resident complaining, we are not promoting that campground. And I mean, obviously you can see that in in the budget and things. So I have talked to our marketing person and she is uh, planning to take a more aggressive uh, approach to marketing it uh, this coming year. But it was interesting because the person wanted us to, to advertise it as a fly campground, not a North Huron campground because we had uh, been doing that. But I guess if people do search for black campground, it's not coming up on Google and things as easily. So, um, but if you looked at insurance, is pretty well the same. Uh, we were underspent um, in materials and supplies. Again, they didn't have um, as much time um, to get things done. Uh, building repair and maintenance, they didn't have as, as much in equipment uh, repairs and uh, breakdowns. Um, I mean, even if you look back at the actuals in 2017, those were 79, uh, 77. So um, that's going to fluctuate from year to year because, you know, you're going to have some good years and some bad years. Um, janitorial supplies, pretty well in line. Um, electricity, we do not have any of the uh, utilities. We do not have the final bills in as of yet. So those numbers are going to change a bit. And... Um, Pardon? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, I thought she said something. And then, uh, and then, public works machinery rentals. Um, again, that goes back to public works that Sean may be may be able to speak toward or against. So it's just uh, I, I know. An, an open field going up thirty five thousand dollars. Budget for an open field. I just was wondering where that. Figure and what's really a concern, and there's nothing, uh, I don't have anything in here to transfer uh, to reserve, but in speaking with staff, 
um, as this facility is aging, the infrastructure on it is going to need repairs and things, and uh, more and more because I guess it was put in phases in the the, the, mm -hmm. um, uh, the oldest part. They're starting to starting to see more and more issues, and we may have to start to invest some money into it. Renewable climate change. But I, I, I understand where you're coming from, Councillor Faulkner. I really do. Um, but when I went back through the numbers and trying to justify it, I mean, uh, we can certainly look at those numbers and try to um, trim them down a bit um, if that helps for the next round and things and, and, and take a look at it and see if there's any, any trimming that we can do. Um, I know that uh, I even talked about the waste disposal and things uh, with them. Um, apparently, there's the, the, the bill hasn't been allocated yet for the bin that was brought in for, I believe, threshers. So they're, they're, that may have to transfer in there. That's like $1,000. Um, they, they don't take care of their own? No, and that's something that I found was unusual for a large event here. Um, because if we have to bring in additional, in Wilmot, if we had to bring in additional garbage bins or whatever, the group for a large event, the group would have to pay for it. But here, um, you know, it's budgeted in here. And, things, and I would have to, uh, I believe there's an agreement with them, isn't there, not Donna? There is an agreement. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's part of the agreement. We would have to look at that. We have a question here for Chris. Um, through you, Reed. Uh, Vicki, we have a tremendous asset here. Like campground, yeah, you said it maybe it's unusual, but we don't think so. It's normal for us. Yeah. Um, but to save the property for just um, thrashers, like the events there, or maybe a dog show or whatever, uh, we've got a we've got to look for other other um, themes, and, and we lost the. Um, wizard guys. Wizard guys. Why? <laughs> they 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 wanted it. Um, it went bankrupt. Who did it? So wizard guys. Wizardry or? went bankrupt. Okay. So okay. That's a good reason. But there's, <laughs> <laughs> but there's there's more themes out there, and um, another. I've heard that there's guys that come in there late in the, late at night, leave early in the morning, free. Because nobody's checked them, and you know, there's a lot of wages going here, and you're wondering, okay, what are they doing, other than the grass cutting? Um, you know, we have to have um, rules and regs and a person there and utilize it. Like, it, there could be seasonals there. Like, I used to go to our family used to go to a trailer park up, up north in the Bruce, and they're they're all well attended now if it's an issue with the auburn place are they fighting against any changes here i don't know but it's competition what the heck so um your, your marketing person has to just go nuts with this we we should like i don't know if we could ever come par or, or you know come up with like 70 grand in income, but boy, we can cut this deficit. There's no reason why not. And then there's there's shopping in town too. Like there's other benefits to it. I'm sure it's been looked at, but I'm not seeing anything happening. So we need. So we'll, we'll, work, we'll work on that as we move forward. You know, um, you've given good direction to the staff. So Vic, you've, I'm sure you've heard it from others too, but now you've heard it from these Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks, Vicki. So we'll move on then to the um, rec programs then, page 41. So under the uh, rec programs budget, um, uh, it's uh, one of the things I should have mentioned at the beginning when uh, before we started this is that the, uh, the way the complex uh, works, there's all these different layers of budgeting that's complex and things. So there's budgets that are specific for 
the fitness center without programming and for the aquatic center and the arena all without programming and then there's the different layers of programming that's involved uh, with the rec programs budget um, it cover it covers uh, some things that are going on at the center but also off-site at the school facilities things so um, Looking at program registrations and things, uh, when we budget for programs, um, similar to uh, daycare, we it, it's a projection. We we don't know actuals and things, so we base our our projections off of the minimal number of participants required to run that course or that program to break even. This is and when we're talking rec programs, this is your rec and leisure. This is not aquatics or fitness. This is, you know, if we're running um, uh, PD day programs, day camps, um, ballroom dancing, karate, those types of programs, your general recreation programs, I think. So um, when you go down that, you're going to see uh, basically in comparison, comparing apples, or not comparing apples to apples, but comparing the revenue to the expenditures. Um, in the actual, we were able to cover our costs and generate um, uh, a bit of uh, surplus there. And we're projecting costs um, to be just under our revenue uh, as well for 2019. So. Any questions? Not seeing any. Okay, so if we move on then to uh, aquatics, Ricky, page 42. Okay. So on the aquatics budget here, you're going to see there's two sections. So at the top, uh, you'll see it's broken out by program, and you'll have revenue and expenditures. And then the next section is um, on the, the pool building, as we call it. So um, as I mentioned in my presentation before, recreation does not make money. It's a service. So um, under the expen expenditures for the program itself, um, as you can see, when you're looking at revenue versus actuals and things, we we were uh, uh, revenue was under uh, wasn't able to cover our expenditures on the program itself. Um, our uh, projected uh, budget for um, 2019 is showing that all of our expenditures uh, for that program have increased. Um, if we go back and we look at kind of the uh, salaries, for instance, and things, part of the problem or the par part of the reporting issue with this is that we actually transfer the wages from one of our staff members, a full-time staff member, from this budget into the administration budget um, because uh, she was the acting director for a portion of the year. And things, so our actuals on uh, full-time salaries is coming in lower in this particular budget. Um, and we had to bring in part-time staff to uh, offset her hours, uh, one of our senior part-time staff. So then, uh, as you can see, is our part-time staff wages were up um, as well. So um, we're coming in right now uh, under full-time salaries, um, uh, pretty well leveling out. Again, there was uh, uh, any kind of increases with pay equity or, or uh, step increase and the cost of living. So reflecting that salaries will be, full-time salaries will be around the 56, 57,000. Um, you'll notice part-time wages have come down uh, as well to be more accurate and reflect uh, what's, what's occurring um, within that. Um, so just starting down, uh, we do have, uh, uh, allocation in here, the same as in 2018 for clothing. It is part of the policy, North Carolina policy, for uh, allocating a certain of, uh, amount of uh, money for part time and full time staff um, uh, clothing. Um, subscriptions and memberships are up. Uh, we are looking at uh, changing the aquatics, aquatic, sorry, uh, sorry, my, I'm getting kind of dry mouth here. Aquafit program that we're offering, which requires us to uh, uh, have a membership um, with this, and we're gonna, and it also affects the training just below 
for us to send staff off to be trained, but in this, in becoming a member of this organization and uh, having our staff trained, um, we're also going to be able to train, uh, uh, use it as a program to train other staff from other municipalities and things and generate revenue. So that's, that's going to help us um, down the road with our revenue generation. Um, office supplies, we were slightly over. We want to stay with the same amount budgeted. Um, materials and supplies, same as, as budgeted for 2018. We were a bit under. Um, as you move down, equipment repair and maintenance, um, we, were, we were up. Um, I'll have to refer to my notes, but um, we did we are budgeting for a lesser amount uh, for 2019. And then uh, clothing sales under expenditures. And that's a unique thing that I found because what's uh, what's been set up is that they're doing some clothing sales to generate uh, revenue for the facility to to buy things like to help buy things like the top docks and and uh, even go toward the, the diving board expense that's being budgeted this year. So it's a kind of an additional thing that they're doing, uh, but it does help offset it. It generates revenue, which um, is uh, included above in the, in the sales. So um, we spend a little and we, we cover those expenses and come back um, uh, to generate a bit of money. So if you move down to the pool building itself, um, that does not have any programming in it, nor the aquatic staff in it. Um, the full-time salaries is an allocation of the uh, facility manager and the facility operators um, and the, the operation of the mechanical parts of the building, um, as well as cleaning and things. So um, when we, part of uh, the restructuring and things, part of what was discussed was the fact that um, they were not able to spend as much time on the aquatic center and doing the things and preventative maintenance and whatnot at the aquatic center um, that was required. So when we reallocated the wages um, from, say, the facility manager and things, and we reallocated uh, or dedicated some of his time to actually being uh, doing the work in the center itself. So you're going to see, a, a, I think it's, uh, what, Fourteen, fifteen thousand dollar increase there, and things, and bringing his uh, his uh, salary over. Again, we're not hiring anyone new. We're just reallocating where his salary is charged to. <coughs> uh, part time staff were uh, keeping the same on the allocation there uh, as to what was budgeted. Um, there is uh, some funds budgeted in there for public works support. Um, again, that, and it's a portion, uh, portion of the cost. So for instance, if um, when public works plows the parking lot and things, there's a formula that's used to break down the cost uh, per center. So the pool complex will pay for a portion of that. The Knights of Columbus Hall will pay a portion. Uh, fitness center will pay a portion arena complex will be a portion. So it's all broken out by formula. <coughs> the, um, if we continue down the page, materials and supplies just seems to be uh, within reason. Um, transfer to reserves on that facility. Um, there is some repairs coming up to that facility on the ceiling and, sound, and, and replacing the sound baffle. So we've been trying to put uh, $35,000 away each year for that. Um, building repair and maintenance, our, we didn't have to do as many. Um, looking for anything that kind of jumps out. Um, one of the things, inspections and contracts. That's an area, that was one of the things I spoke to them about today. And um, apparently, uh, like we just purchased this all-in-one floor scrubber cleaner thing. It's supposed to be this, this great thing. But prior to that, we had a contract. We had to have a contractor come in and do the, the cleaning and things. So um, what we've now done is, is purchase the equipment. And we'll be doing it ourselves. So um, uh, under the inspections and contracts, that cleaning contract was under there. Um, again, 
uh, electricity, <coughs> all the utilities, nothing is finalized there yet. Uh, we're still waiting on those final bills. And um, uh, equipment repair and maintenance, um, we were underspent there. Again, not as many uh, repairs needed. Um, and it does, uh, as Councillor Seif indicated earlier, it does depend on the year. One year we can get hit fairly hard with repairs and then things can run smoothly for um, a few years following that. Thanks, Eric. One thing I would say about the equipment repairs and maintenance, remember we just did a great big line of repair. Yes. So that we, we spent many, many years spending lots of money on fixing the liner within the pool and then we just they just tiled it so we capitalize that tiling which will save us on repairs going forward but is that repair in the 2019 budget or the 2018 budget? That Which repair? repair for the tile that was capitalized okay. so that was it but but by but by capitalizing that that tile saves on the rent of the repairs and maintenance of the of the liner all issues the all the time yeah. so if i'm reading this properly i'm looking at a three hundred and thirty thousand dollar loss for the pool three thirty seven yeah <laughs> sorry your worship we were just talking oh, about okay. just going back to the campground and the outdoor allocation of things and how that uh how how there's it captured some of the trails and things in that uh, budget so for for public work staffing costs and things so. So I missed what um, Councillor Seif was saying. So um, he was just saying that you did the uh, took care of the liner. We put it through capital instead of uh, as an expense, and you know it's going to pay us off tenfold compared to the fixing it every year, like the daycare move. But I'm looking here, and I'm seeing four hundred ninety-three thousand. If I did my math right here, uh, we're one hundred and sixty-three coming. We're going to lose three hundred thirty thousand dollars this year, as compared. I didn't have time to figure it out, but as compared to about. Two hundred and twenty thousand. So that's a hundred thousand dollar more loss. We have. How did that happen? If you actually look at previous years, um, it, going back to two thousand and seventeen, and and you can look at the costs going as it's continued to uh, change. There, um, it looks like in two thousand and. 17 budget to actuals like their, their actuals were coming in at 283 i'm oh, sorry total operating program that's program and building together but they were operating at 468 sorry my vision's getting a little blurry at this time of night and actually then, that's okay because i think we might be calling it an intro anyway actually oh. now you mentioned that when i look at that if i go to the top and i see that the revenue was 481 actuals and in 2019, we're only going to pull in 163. Maybe that's where you could have a look at that and tell us how that happened. Through mm -hmm. your worship. Yep. Uh, if you look at that, there was a trillion grant there for $150,000 um, that that would have uh, for sure. significantly, yes, yep, affected sure. that revenue line. That's a, I didn't realize how much we were losing on the pool. Now I know I listed it. Mm -hmm. And I know why the man in Exeter told me they didn't Pools do not make money. They do not, and they do not come near to covering their costs. But it's very hard to put the put a um, cost to you know teaching a child or someone else the skills of swimming and possibly saving their life at some point. Speaking of that, we talked about that the other night, and you said that I meant to ask Inch. Um, you said this. Oh, I remember why now. I'm just getting tired too. Yes. It was because okay. we don't have all those skills. Um, we are hitting 9:30, folks. We do have some staff that actually have an hour's drive home. Um, how much more we got to go, Donna? Well, we, we have too much to, okay. to finish tonight. So what I would suggest is that we, um, uh, next week, Monday night's council, Tuesday night's police board. So um, I would suggest that we reconvene on Wednesday night. And if we could push through and at least then, we don't, we don't have that much left. So if we could get through the whole, finish getting through the whole budget once for next Wednesday night, if that would be a, a goal for us. Any problems with anyone? Is 6 p.m. okay with everyone to start again? Um, I'm not seeing anybody say no. Okay. 
Okay. Um, one thing I do want to point out before we have the next meeting, though, I don't see anything in the budget for working on the Hutton Heights. Um, and again, it's late, and I forget how we left that. Um, but we should have something, I would think, in the budget to get that rolling because, boys and girls, we need to use that. These are one of the things, these are the things that are going to make us money and bring us back to a stable position. So if we're biting the bullet on everything else, and it may have to wait till next year because of the police. But I would rather see something not going to reserves and move forward on that half and half project uh, because we're going to have some folks come and talk to us about it. And again, this doesn't have to all be done in the next six weeks. This is, but uh, at budget time, we need to keep it just maybe allocate some into economic development committee or so you have a look and see what you can do yeah we'll get to the economic development but there is some money in there um so i think we'll put that later okay yeah, okay um so if there's nothing else for the night i want to thank everybody any other questions or comments before we wrap it up so then just to say then so what we'd like to do next week then is we will um finish vicky's budgets then we have to do police we have economic development. We have um, the, then we want to have a good discussion on the capital budget. Mm -hmm. And then we'll talk, um, we've talked about our loans now with the big loan that we're going to pay off on Friday. The loans are not quite as much to talk about. And then we can talk a little bit about area rating. And so then after that, then we'll talk about staff fine tuning and when we can uh, meet again for our second round. So that's still kind of our plan. Sounds good. So, confirmatory bylaw, bylaw number 0419, being a bylaw of the Township of North Huron to confirm the January 16, 2019 actions of the Council of the Township of North Huron. And that the bylaw of uh, number 04 2019 being a bylaw to confirm the January 16, 2019 actions of the Council of the Township of North Huron. Be introduced, read a first, second, and third, and final time signed by the Reeve and clerk to be engrossed into the bylaw books. Can I have a motion? Trevor, Chris, all in favor? Nobody want to talk about. Okay. Adjournment that there be no further business uh, before the town. Sh Go ahead, Trevor. Adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> and that would take place at 9:30. Seconder. Paul. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you guys.